at Nebraska, a new era. The passing game is in. At Pittsburgh, a new look at quarterback. He's left-hander Tyler Palco. From the school that produced Mike Ditka and Dan Marino, Pittsburgh hosts one of the legends of college football, the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Well, John and the gang back in New York mentioned it. The problem that is plaguing the West Coast offense of Nebraska, interception. Joe Daly, who has struggled with the terminology, has thrown more interceptions than he has touchdowns. Three last week against Southern Miss. That led to an upset loss at home. Now, my partner Gary Danielson, who knows something about playing quarterback, let me ask you now about that. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. I thought you were going to say something about interception. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start, do that to start. you. But what do you do with a young quarterback when you're trying to, you know, slow down the interception? Yeah, right. You know, look here. Now, this is a complete overhaul for Bill Callahan. And Bo Schimbeckler once said, there's no such thing as a little thing in football. It's a foot here, an extra yard here. Everyone in the Nebraska team was recruited to run a different offense. It's going to take some time, and they're going to have to depend on their defense to win. No turnovers, and they can win this game. And for Walt Harris and Pittsburgh, it's the same thing. Precision is the name of this Pitt offense, but they've lost so many players, and they're bringing in a new quarterback. Defense will have to win the game. And, uh, Gary, the floodwaters will update that story with Jack Aroot when we continue on ABC. Brent, that rain you were referring to in the flash flooding, the remnants of Hurricane Ivan as it roared through the Pittsburgh area. Now, fortunately, no one was injured that was associated with either team, but the Allegheny River behind me is scheduled to crest at about 4.30 this afternoon. There was one close call, though, for the University of Nebraska. After taking an hour and a half to get to their hotel from the airport, they said they got caught in some of the weather and some of the flooding. Said it got a little scary when cars started floating by and crashing into their bus. Yeah, exactly, Jack, and let's hope everybody's high and dry this afternoon. Pittsburgh winning the toss. They will defer. Adam Russell, who is also the punter, kicks it off for Pitt. This is Green driven back into the end zone, and it will come out on the 20-yard line, and we'll see Joe Daly right away. He's a sophomore quarterback. He's right-handed out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Got a great attitude about the problems that have plagued him following the game last week. He got a telephone call from Coach Callahan, who just wanted to check on the young man. Remember, Bill Callahan's son is a backup quarterback out at UCLA. He knows that these are just youngsters that you're dealing with. So Daly will bring the offense up to the line of scrimmage now for first down. We would expect to see Corey Ross, number four, the I-back, get a call early in this game as the receivers in the West Coast fluctuate. And here comes Ross, who stumbled just a bit, picked up about two yards. Now the Outback Steakhouse starting lineups for Nebraska. And we can see that Ross, who just carried it, he's a small target, 5'6", but tough for defenders as he hides behind this big offensive line. Kurt Mann is a story. He's the center number 64. He's got to do the job. Richie Incognito, who's been suspended, withdrew from school. He will no longer be a Cornhusker. So Mann must hold up at center for the rest of the season. Second down and eight. The tight end shows motion. Ross on the pitch behind the pulling lineman. Finds a seam, but he's short of the first down against this pit defense. They are stout up front, especially at the defensive tackle spot. They're experienced in there with Cortunas and Stevens, and now the defensive ends have to stand up. H.B. Blades, the son of many, out of South Florida, and over there at that one DB, number 25, that's Daryl Rebus in his second start. Last week, four tackles, and today he's got to handle the West Coast. Let's see if Callahan keeps it basic with Nebraska or goes to the pass. David Horn, the running back, on the toss coming left. Looking for a seam, first down, Nebraska. David Horn has been quiet most of the season. He was back on the kickoff return team, and now is the eye back who picks up a big first down, and Ross checks back into the lineup. When you talk to the Pitt defense, they say the number one run for Nebraska, the power toss. That's already been run twice so far in this game, and they got a first down with those two runs. Pittsburgh must prove they can stop the power running game before they're going to see much passing and fancy play. Now 
the shift, and Ross will wind up at eye back. Perry in the tight end is over at the right side of the formation, and now they empty the backfield on first down. The three-step drop, Pilkington the receiver. There's 11 more yards and a first down. Ross Pilkington out of Fort Collins, Colorado. The first target for Joe Daly. And you saw a little bit of Bill Callahan, NFL influence on that play. You match up your receiver who has a lot of experience in Pilkington against the freshman defensive back for Pittsburgh Rebus that you were talking about. Load it up one way, get the matchup, easy pitch and catch, get Daly off, and get to Nebraska with another first down. And that graphic highlighted the difference that Callahan's passing attack has meant for Nebraska so far. Fake toss, and Daly will roll right. He's got a run pass option, going to throw it, drop. Should have been caught by Dusty Kaiser, a senior tight end. Now, we asked Daly what he wanted to accomplish early against this pit defense. Confidence, rhythm, tempo, you know, just getting everybody uh, on the same page, getting everyone in and out of the huddle. Even though he's thrown all those interceptions, you take your hat off to Joe Daly. Brand new system, and believe me, when you learn new terminology, and you're a sophomore in college, and it's a West Coast. It is complex. It's like suddenly being thrown into a calculus class. Everything is different. Second down and 10. Ross slips. And you know, Gary, the coaches down on the field, Kevin Gosgriff, the defensive assistant of Nebraska, noted that on tape from a week ago, he thought a lot of players slipped. And, and it's a little slipperier in this game than it was last week. I noticed in warm-ups, both of the receiving groups were having trouble with their sharp cuts, the square ends, the comeback routes, so they have to watch that. You know, Brent, this Pittsburgh defense gave up so many rushing yards to the smash mouth offense, but they also had a problem getting sacks. Let's see if they can put some pressure on Joe Daly. Obvious passing situation here. Under pressure, and I heard a whistle. Flag. So a flag comes down. The pressure was coming from the linebacker blades, so they were blitzing the young man from South Florida. Daddy Benny wanted him to go to Miami, but he wanted Dead to ball. go elsewhere. Dead ball. The layup game. The layup game. Number 12 offense. Five yard penalty. Uh, Jack, uh, uh, I know you've been down, down on the field. What's the situation? Well, Brent, considering all the rain, a record-breaking rainfall that this Heinz Field received yesterday, it's in pretty good shape. Unfortunately, as you guys noted, there's a lot of divots coming up. Surprisingly, what the Nebraska coaches were most concerned about, the wind coming from the open end off the Allegheny River. They said, boy, that's going to make it tough to kick end zones on that side of the field. Yeah, the record-breaking rainfall was 5.87 inches here yesterday. Daly. Backing up to set the screen incomplete, and that's a penalty against Pittsburgh. The receiver was tackled before he even had a crack at it. Ross just did not have a crack at that ball. Yeah, and Stevens, the defensive tackle, who is taught to tackle those running backs as they come through the middle, it happened to be a screen pass, and you're going to see Stevens, number 94. You see it. He sees Ross. He says, I'm not going to let him get out, and the ball happens to be being thrown to Ross on the play. Now the officials will say, was it a fake to the running back, and the defensive lineman had a chance to tackle him? Holding, Holding. Number, 94. number 94, the pass did not pass cross did not the cross. neutral zone. A 10-yard penalty, penalty remains third, remains down. third down. down. John Smith, Big East crew here today. He's the referee with that announcement. His umpire, Bruce Palmer. Veteran crew working this game here. John! And Walt Harris over on the sideline. He's had a couple of mistakes here. Already. Yeah, he has. Uh, Walt Harris is an offensive coach, but he spent much of his offseason going back to the defense and trying to reestablish that to defensive the tenacity uh, that Pittsburgh eight, 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 had. Down, down, they were assistant coaches together in Illinois back in the 80s. Bill Callahan and Walt Harris. Third down. Draw play, short of the first down, and a terrific defensive play by Clint Session. The middle linebacker from Pompano Beach, Florida, number 17, read it perfectly. I think Ross slipped a bit on that one also. Remember, Nebraska plays on artificial turf. This is going to be tougher transition for them than Pittsburgh. 
Sam Cook is back to punt. And Allen Richardson, a freshman wide receiver, the return man. Good looking punt. Fair catch. He's going to get away from it. That's and a bad be down play. Inside the 10 yard. He should have inside That's the a five. Bad play. He should have gone over and made the catch. Absolutely. Right. That's a young player that didn't want to make a mistake. And it cost his team very bad field position. 48 yards and the left hander, Tyler Palco. He was a uh, schoolboy whiz from Imperial, Pennsylvania, right here, West Allegheny High School. And note the rush yards so far. Now he broke out of that protected pocket. Some of the linemen thought maybe he broke a little bit too quickly because, as they pointed out, we can't really help him much if he starts to scramble. But Nebraska might force him out on the run. Just keep in mind that he is left-handed, as Rutherford was, the senior that he replaced. Short drop in zone, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. In trouble here because of the field position on our Outback Steakhouse lineup. Raymond Kirkley, the running back, number 43, has to carry the load just like he did last week because the passing game was not that efficient. It's a work in progress. He gained 100 yards. Offensive line. And remember, because he's left-handed, it is Dale Williams, the right tackle, who has the blind side here for the quarterback as he gets set. The fullback on a uh, short bus, Tim Murphy, the junior from Akron, Ohio, straight ahead. And now we'll take a look at this Nebraska defense. They still have plenty of talent here. But Carriker injured. I'm sure he's watching this back on television. We hope he gets healthy soon. Jay Moore moves into his spot. Now, Barrett Rue. He had a great grandfather who played as a Husker. He leads his team with 19 tackles. And with McPherson out with an injury, Lornell also watching this. We hope he gets healthy. Courtney Grixby. And I believe Pitt is going to have to call a timeout with the 25 second clock running down. So we'll take a break. We're scoreless here in Pittsburgh. Well, here's something you don't see very often. Uh, the returning secondary players for Nebraska brand have more interceptions than all of the wide receivers that will play today, including the tight end for Pittsburgh. That's what happens when you have a guy like Larry Fitzgerald leave early. All freshmen and true sophomores. True freshmen and true sophomores for Pittsburgh. And the Bullocks, Daniel at strong, Josh at free. Going to throw on third down, and there's a big first down pass for Palco. On a third down for the end zone, he hits freshman Kelvin Chandler. Now remember this name. You know that Walt Harris is a great coach of wide receiver. He's waiting for one of these freshmen to grow up. This young man is from Fort Lauderdale. Nice timing on this play. Fabian Washington played it. See how he slipped? You cannot break on the ball. You have to play a little bit conservative in the defensive secondary. I think those little slant-ins will be there all day, and I look for Nebraska to blitz more because of that. They'll play off and try to get to the quarterback. I got lucky, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guess it, that first down marker, sometimes things can look real bad. You know, Palco has to feel good about that. You talk about a team, they threw for 49 yards against Ohio University, a MAC team last week. Now they're going against this Nebraska defense that was one of the best pass coverage teams in the country last year. Palco feels good about that reception. Well, that was a big call by Walt Harris, too, to have his new quarterback throw from the end zone on third down. I would think the Huskers might have thought that Kirkley might have tried to gain him some yards and then go ahead and punt it out, but uh, was not to be as Walt Harris didn't show much last week against Ohio, and uh, clearly there are some new wrinkles in his playbook right now, and uh, the 25-second clock is plenty of time left here. You, He's down to about 18. You might make an argument that these two teams will get better more than any two teams in the country as the year goes on. And they moved on the left side of the offensive line. When Palco went to check, the offensive line jumped on that play. And uh, the left tackle, the veteran over there, and uh, that's uh, number 78. He's an awfully, awfully good player, Petiti. But they call the uh, they call 56, who's right next to him, Charles Spencer. I, I thought both I of them moved, actually. Yeah, Spencer moved and drew Petiti off on the play is, is what happened on it. You know, we asked Walt, does Kelko have any checkoffs? He said no. So that might have been a combination of Nebraska making a defensive call and, and, and just because I can't imagine there would be an audible on first down and 10. 
So here's first and 15. Nebraska shows pressure. Coming with five rush, look for a seam, and it and it wasn't to be as Daniel Bullock's the strong safety from Chattanooga. The twin brothers, Daniel and Josh. And Daniel moved into the starting uh, line. A little, bit, makes the start. little bit of a mess up. Fullback goes this way, tailback goes that way. You can see discombobulation doesn't work. A little bit of a mess. Yep, you can see actually, that's what happened. Timmy Murphy went the wrong way. Play was blew up before it gets started. So back-to-back -back plays, Pittsburgh shows their inexperience. They jump off sides, and now they just get a mess up on a simple handoff play. Straight basic eye. Two wide outs to the left. Paco again in the end zone. Going to take off to the 15-yard line. Well short of the first down. And let's get our first update of this Saturday afternoon from John Saunders. Brent, the Taco Bell update. Michigan trying to bounce back from that loss to Notre Dame facing San Diego State. Chad Henney finds Braylon Edwards. Great catch. And then he backs into the end zone. 54 yards. But San Diego State, after a turnover, rushed. Uh, Chad Henney, another youngster from Pennsylvania, although the eastern part of the state. Pittsburgh really did not have a shot at him. It came down to Michigan and Penn State. The Wolverines winning that, and he figures to be the Wolverine quarterback for the foreseeable future, and we've got another flag here. Delay a game again. Falco taking too long. you got to have that mental clock. Football. To live game, offense, number three, five yard penalty, remains third down. So it is a work in progress here for Falco and the Panther offense, passing for only 49 yards. That's the lowest figure of the Harris era. And you can see Palco a little bit angry. I think that that play is not getting too quicker. I think he's blaming the sideline yeah. over here. It's not good to blame Walt Harris. I think he's been here longer than Palco. Third down. Palco is the son of a coach. We should point out. Played for them. Intercepted. Picked off at the 20-yard line by Fabian Washington. Washington's inside the five-yard line. First and goal for the Huskers. This was just a poorly thrown ball. The wide receiver was open with a square in. Palco throw the ball maybe six yards behind. We're going to see a square in right here. That's the interception guy in the corner. Palco does not have any pressure inside. That offensive line for Pitt does a nice job. Steps up into it. Watch how poorly that ball's thrown. Goes in. Fabian Washington gets another. He got hit after he left the ball go, but you can see how far that was behind the receiver to the outside that time. So here's Joe Daly from the eye formation. Lost the eye back. Play fake to him. They're going to throw on first down. Daly in trouble. Sacked at the eight-yard line. That is the first sack of the year against this Nebraska offensive line. J.J. Horn, junior linebacker. You can see they wanted to go to the tight end, Matt Harry, in that time on first down. That's a, a call that the NFL makes a lot. They don't think they can run the ball inside. You try to get a touchdown. There it is, first sack, 75 passes by Nebraska. Inside that 10-yard line, second down. Short drop, fire slant, Pilkington bobbled it going in. Had he held the ball, I think he would have broken the plane. But Daryl Rivas, the freshman corner from Aliquippa, knocked it free. Watch Rivas. Everyone's looked like a slip here, a slant to the outside. Watch everybody fighting their footing right here, and that's why the ball was thrown perfectly. Caught a little bit high, but Rivas does a nice job of stripping. Just enough of a juggle right there that Pickleton could, Pickleton couldn't bring it in. Third down, great stand by the Absolutely. defense here so far. A sack. Charred the ball loose at the end zone. Daly, Pickleton can't hang on. Incomplete. And it's field goal time for the Huskers. 
and a touchdown opportunity evaporates. They came with the slant last time, the matchup Bill Callahan's looking for against the freshman. Another good throw, both of them should have been touchdowns. Pilkington is counted on to catch the ball. He's not a speed guy. He should have caught both those plays. Here is Sandro DeAngelis. We don't know if he's going to kick this, but he sure is a good student. 3.5. 6-6-9, 26-yarder. <laughs> and Nebraska strikes first here in Pittsburgh. The turnover leads to a field goal, but for Pittsburgh, it could have been a whole lot worse. Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, and American Revolution. New York Stock Exchange, the world puts its stock in us. And Miller, there's good and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. You look down from our blimp above. What was interesting was to watch Tyler Palco after he threw the interception as Nebraska bunches here on the kickoff it'll be fielded at about the nine yard line this is Furman Marcus Furman down short of the 20 but what I want to show you remember he yelled over at the coaches now he took a lick he got up realized it was intercepted and he went out of his way out of his way to avoid the coaching staff he came off of the sideline stayed far away from the head coach went back the trainer coming over to him obviously you can see a little bit of pain as he went over to that sideline and now he's right back with the offense down by three three wide receivers on the toss play they finally find number 43 Raymond Kirkley and we check in with John Brandon, the Verizon wireless update. Remember the week K.J. Harris had in week one, over 350 yards around there. Maryland against West Virginia. That's Harris again. Six yards on the touchdown run that came after a Maryland turnover to West Virginia, who lost twice to Maryland last year, leads 7-0. Yeah, John, and you got to keep in mind, Harris was listed as questionable early in the week. So a bit of a surprise to see him, but he's a dandy for West Virginia. Palco wants to set the screen, oh, and he was in danger of throwing his second pick that time. Baron Rude rudely interrupted that play. A loss of six yards, and uh, we are live looking down from above Nebraska. There's a lot of red here, and the key play in the game, Palco picked off by Fabian Washington, the junior from Creighton, Florida. And that led to the Nebraska field goal. Third down and a bunch and a quick kick. Palco, good all around athlete. Just short, right at midfield actually. So there's the old quick kick. Yeah, That's third, fun to watch, 41 yards. Third and 20, not a bad play. You can't risk another turnover. We'll take a break with the Huskers up by a field goal. The wrath of Hurricane Ivan this far north. Almost six inches of rain yesterday. Entire marinas washed out and boats stacked up as the, the devastating damage continues up here in the north. The rain that swept through this area yesterday. Some of those boats going down the river, the Allegheny docks were still attached to them earlier this morning. And here's Daly for Nebraska. Play fake. Got a man open. Pilkington this time hangs on inside the 10-yard line on a crossing pattern. Tez Morris makes the stop. A 41-yard gain. Mike Phillips, number 10, the corner for Pittsburgh, played it perfectly and the ball was thrown over his outstretched hands he knew it was coming he searched up the wide receiver here he is right here crossing route comes across watch him back up he knows it's coming no one's to his side over there he backs up he sees number two he says oh i got this i got this i got this oh could have been an interception big play and ross to the six yard line the second down 
Nebraska up by three. Now working with short field. And a reminder, of course, that the game two of the doubleheader, Ohio State, North Carolina State, or Oregon, Oklahoma. We'll be right after our game here from Pittsburgh. Freewald is the fullback. He's offset to the left. Timeout called by Daly. There were still seven seconds on the uh, play clock, but he saw something he did not like, and so we'll take a break. Now here's a uh, program reminder. This fall on ABC, they survived the crash, but then they survived the unknown. Lost premieres Wednesday, 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Good move by Joe Daly right there. He didn't lose his presence with the play clock. You got second down right there. Scoring opportunity. Do not want to take a penalty. He knew he didn't have the right formation, so he took the timeout. Ah, the terminology in the West Coast. Second down and goal. Dear Green is now the eye back. Fake to him. Throw, fullback, nothing doing. Good read by Malcolm Postal. Postal and J.J. Horn play that will linebacker spot for Pittsburgh. They stretch out with the slot receiver, but they're very accustomed to going out with that passing game. They were ready for that fullback play. Another little stretch play, keep you off balance. Big difference looking team with Nebraska this year, attacking in so many different ways. Haven't seen the old quarterback draw yet, have we? Third down and goal. Dana going to throw for it, dropped again, and that's Harrion interfered with, and that'll be an automatic first down. Tez Morris, the junior free safety from Hamilton, Ohio, such, the defender. Such a good job of coaching. You get your tall guy, Harrion, 6'5", 240 against Morris, 5'10". Okay, that's just like throwing a lob pass when you do it with the tight end right there. One-on-one, -on -one, the matchup you want, that's the strategy of the West Coast offense. Bill Callahan says, we don't take what they give us. We take That's what we want. Number 20 on the defense. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line, first and goal. See, by formation, they put this matchup over here. They take what they want. They got their tight end on the safety right there. One-on-one, -on -one, turn around, throw the ball. You can see it very easily. Morris gets into Herrian's back, and they're going to get first and goal. Marion might be the happiest with this offense this of any of the players for Nebraska. Gary, if I was to ask you what's new with Nebraska, what would you say? <laughs> right. Pick a topic, right? The Panthers got some inexperience on offense, and they must tackle if they're going to win this year. Face a tough stand here. Ross bangs straight ahead. Good stop. Postel was one of the defenders in on that play. He penetrated from his linebacking position. So number six has been very active so far. Nebraska has shown good balance in both games. They have rushed for over 200 and passed for over 200 in each of their games. Friends, I think this thing for Nebraska will evolve into a power running game, pass game, similar to the way maybe Colorado did it when they made that run with Greg Brown a few years ago. Formation to the right. Daly slips. Ball loose. Nebraska. Without the turnovers, obviously Nebraska's 2-0. It was exchange problems right here. He never had it. Followed it and fortunately got on top of it. Now it's back to third and eight. They're still in the huddle, and there's 10 seconds on that play clock. He'll come to the line with about five. Two. Got it off. Slam. And battles his way just short of the goal. That was Mark LaFleur, the junior from Omaha. 
and it is fourth and very short, and the coaches can't hesitate. They send the kicking unit on the field. You can see it. The floor goes in backwards, but the ball never crosses the plane right there. Just short. Nice tackle to the outside by Phillips right there. So here's Sandro DeAngelis. This is an 18-yarder. Bobble. The snap is bobbled. Pittsburgh takes over on downs. Credit the Pittsburgh defense overall, even though the snap was not well handled. But the Pittsburgh D basically has kept the Panthers in this football game in the first quarter. This well could be a 14-0 football game. Absolutely. Picklington has dropped a touchdown pass. Joe Daly has fumbled the snap, and now they've fumbled the snap on the field goal. On four downs from first and goal, Nebraska fumbled two of them. Four downs, Nebraska fumbled two of them. That's how you get stopped for no points. That was Kellen Houston, the, uh, the holder right there. Kind of a tough break for Pittsburgh to have to take this ball right back to the one-inch line. You thought maybe they'd get it back there. They haven't had any field position in this first quarter. Twice they've tried to come out from inside the five. And again, Pauko going to throw from it. Oh, man. And it is second and ten. Well, a reminder, at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Talked to Walt Harris yesterday about, you know, Palco might have been arguably the biggest recruit Walt Harris has ever had since he's been here. And he said that the first thing Tyler is learning is it's a lot more difficult and complicated to play quarterback than he first thought. And we're seeing that right now. Second down and 10. A defensive struggle unfolding here in the first quarter. Titus Adams, the junior from Omaha. Pittsburgh, for two years now, have not been able, all of last year, they averaged 117 yards running per game. They had games last year against Notre Dame when they gained eight yards. 10 yards versus West Virginia, Miami 26 yards. The same thing is unfolding so far. They must run the ball better to win. Going to throw for the end zone oh. again, and an interception, first and goal. The third first and goal as Wally Muhammad, the junior defensive end, on that zone blitz. He drops off the defensive line. You can see him from the left side of the screen dropping right into his zone. You can see it. That's exactly right, Brent. Palco does not have the experience to figure out that, that in this defense brought by Kevin Cosgrove, it is a staple to drop those defensive ends. They're tough to find, but you have to know coming in as your game plan that it's a possibility he never accounted for. Him. Great defensive call, by the way. Work in progress. Second pick of the game. Ross is the eye back. Daly the quarterback. Here's Ross. This time, end zone, touchdown, Nebraska. Well, you can only hold up so long, and that time Nebraska said, we ain't fooling around with anything. We're going to run our power off tackle play behind Mike Erickson and just ram it into the end zone, and they did. Now DeAngelis with Houston again. Trying to get him a good hold here this time. Lane Kelly. That's good. So it's 13-0. Callahan of Nebraska with the lead. And uh, the aerial coverage for today's game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship Bloomin' Onion. The Outback Steakhouse Airship specializes in college football. PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout the year. Let me correct myself. Forgetting, of course, that there was a botch snap on that second field goal. So it is always 10 nothing. And let's check in with Jack and Ruth, Jack. Well, Brent, remember one year ago, the nickname for Corey Ross was Pork Chop? 
That's because he was only about 5'6", and weighed in, tipped the scales at 220 pounds. You can see the meat on the hook right there a year ago. Well, thanks to Dave Kennedy, the new strength and conditioning coach in Nebraska, who, by the way, came from here in Pittsburgh, Corey has dropped 30 pounds. He said, I don't want that nickname pork chop anymore. I think slim and trim and TV man is a little bit better, don't you? That will work. <laughs> So he scores the afternoon's first touchdown. And uh, Gary, uh, what about the observation that maybe Pittsburgh should at least try the running game? Well, let's see. They've run the ball how many times here in this game so far? Pittsburgh, they've had uh, five runs for five yards. And, you know, they, they do not, they cannot push this defensive line for Nebraska around. They don't feel like they can. And they need field position to kind of establish the play action pass and some of the things that Walt wants to do. It has been a field position disaster for Pittsburgh so far. Absolutely. DeAngelis with the ball on the tee for the Huskers. Up by 10 here. Self-inflicted, by the way, right? It sure is. <laughs> a couple of turnovers here in the early going by the Panthers. This is Furman coming out for Pitt. Daylight. Breaks free. Midfield. And Furman goes all the way. The junior from Connellsville, Pennsylvania. 96 yards, and the Panthers are right back in. Set in the open, there's no such things as little things in football. It's always something. You're dominating a team. Your defense isn't giving up a yard, so you give them a kickoff return to make it a ball game. Josh Cummings. Went to a JC in California. He now handles the field goals, extra points. He'll try to make this a 10-7 game, which he does. To be a good kickoff returner, you just got to have courage. You don't want to do a lot of wiggling. You have to pick out a line, trust your teammates, and go for it. This time, he goes right up there. Good block by Richardson, number seven. It springs in. There's no way the kicker's going to get him on this way. This one, Furman just trusts it, goes for it, and there's nothing better that could have happened for Pittsburgh than this right now because I had the feeling that if they were going to play against the Nebraska defense right now at this point of the game, they weren't going to move the ball. Marcus Furman, a communication rhetoric major, he's a five foot nine inch senior, and what a great moment for him. Put the Panthers right back in this game, 96 yards. And right now, uh, Nebraska fans are saying, you know, we pushed everybody around. We pushed Southern Miss around, gained all those yards. We're pushing this team around. Is this going to happen to us again? You know, and, and you keep a team in the game. That's what happens. Well, they could be up 21 to 7. Absolutely. And instead, it's 10 7. So Green and Horn back deep. And Gressel, the ball on the tee. There is Green. Cousin of Amon Green, the great with the Green Bay Packers. Pittsburgh's defense now must stop. They must stop the run game and force Daly to beat him for This will be green. The yard deep. Nice return to the 29-yard line. It will be first and 10 for Joe Daly. Four of seven for 64 yards. And uh, he's been plagued by dropped passes here so far. Had a couple right at the goal line that should have been caught for touchdowns earlier. <laughs> Dropped sna snaps and passes. They've been he dropped. fumbled a snap. Exactly. Well, let's see if they come back to that power toss that they were effective with before. They end up pulling the tackle around and running to the strong side. They slam down. There it is. Oh, they fake oh. it this time and roll daily and wide open is his wide receiver, Grant Mulkey, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. 
And it's a first. That was a good looking play. Yeah, see, I got to get ready. I, I've done a lot of Nebraska games. Not as many as you, okay? But I'm not used to this first down, fake the toss, and come with the play action pass. You just don't see a lot of that. You might see it after five or six options. First down, you come back and run the play action play. That keeps the defense, and that's the strategy by Callahan. We take what we want, not what they give us. And then again, he took what he wanted, a little play action pass. 18 more yards passing, so he's already passed for 82. And getting close to 100, LaFleur's second grab of the game. Now, does it seem to you that they've shortened the playbook? I, I saw all the experts, you know, guys talking, well, what they're going to do is make the playbook smaller. They're going to do it better. It seems to me like Callahan is challenging his team, saying, here's my offense. If we want to be the champions, we have to do the things I call. And he's sticking to it right now. No, we come to the end of the first quarter, 10-7. Back up to this touching of work from our ABC station. Well, we start the second quarter with Nebraska facing a second down, needing about four yards for a first down, just across midfield against Pitt. And swooping again is Ross, and he was down, so it'll be third down right there. And uh, Gary, and looking at the stats, uh, nine total yards for Pitt. That's not going to cut it. Yeah, it's dangerous right now. Pitt got a big break between that kickoff. You know, I, I don't see that uh, Walt Harris has any option but to keep throwing the football. I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball on Nebraska's front seven. Well, I hate to give up that run. I, you can't do it. So they, they, they're going to have to do both, but they just can't say, well, we don't have a hot quarterback. Let's let's just run the ball. they got to do both. Might try Furman as your tailback. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's your third down. Fires for the first down. Just shy of the 40-yard line, and Pilkington seems to be his go-to target. Ross Pilkington dropped a couple, caught a big one, and hung on that time. Pitt defense was not ready. Look at them. They're all switching and moving around at the snap. Quick call right there, quick slant, and you saw another defensive back slip down. Phillips slipped, and I like the calls that Nebraska's using. Not a uh -oh, trick play here. Got a seat, got way back. That's this. They're shifting. The three pack out of it and then move Heron over. And of course, an NFL type shift, and then they run behind the power with Green. Green across the 40. And uh, well, Daly's an interesting story, Jack. Well, yeah, Brent, and a lot of people say, how could a guy that got recruited to play in the old system in Nebraska could play in the new West Coast system? Why? Because when he was at St. Peter's High School in Jersey City, he knew how to go aerial. For this touchdown play, he did that in high school. He said, I knew the West Coast offense. We played some of it in high school. This is the only difference when I got to Nebraska. They had a wristband with 145 plays on it. Yeah, Jack, I think you just uh, showed us the West Coast of Jersey offense. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. The floor of the motion receiver. Back with the eye back. And this will be third down and long. So, uh... Nebraska not exactly dominating the Pittsburgh defensive front as we talk about running right now. Nebraska struggles for its uh, 10 yards on the ground. Yeah, uh, the, only, the, the only slight difference is they had a lot of plays inside the 10-yard line where they didn't have much room to run the ball, so not much opportunity to gain a lot of yards. But I do like the way Nebraska says, this is our offense, we're going to run it, and all you recruits out there, take a look. We're going to keep throwing the ball. Needing six. Wow. Juggle incomplete. Fourth down, and the punting unit quickly comes on the field for Nebraska. It's One of the things that I like about Callahan's sideline, and it's the first time ever that I've had a chance to watch him in college, field goal units, punting teams, there's no hesitation over there with what they want to do. They don't talk about it. Off comes the unit immediately, like he did down inside the five on fourth down. This was the field goal unit. That again. That NFL discipline. Get that unit out there. High punt. Fumble. Nebraska dives for the ball at the five-yard line. They've got it. Another first and goal. So Nebraska comes up with the bobble snap. Kellen Houston. 
the young man who could not make the clean hold. He gets it right there on the five-yard line. He recovered the fumble. Remember and Alan Richardson who didn't catch the one down on the other side? This time I think he got an earful and said, you got to catch that ball. He's on the far right side of the screen over here. you got to catch it. This is just a coaching 101. 10-yard line, catch the ball. Everyone's giving him a chance to catch it. He misjudges it, gets it off his left shoulder, and that's another turnover first and goal. Going to throw the slant to Pilkington. Twist to the end zone. Six more, Nebraska. Number two is the preferred target of number 12. I can tell you there's an old rule in the NFL. Inside the 10-yard line, you can't play off a receiver just for that reason. They'll throw the slant on you. You must bump them and force the, third, the fade route. Not a lot of confidence with Pittsburgh. They do not play bump and run, and Nebraska goes right to the slant. That is an NFL rule. They're off. We're coming with the slant. So D'Angelo is on for another extra point. Tacks it in on the right side. And uh, turnovers killing the Panthers. Three turnovers, two interceptions, and a fumble punt. There's Pilkington, that time making a good grab. 17-7 timeout. Let's go back to that fumbled punt to right here. This ball was really moving like a knuckleball, and you'll see Allen Richardson right before it hits his left shoulder, he thinks he's going to catch it to the right. Watch him reach right, and then it hits his left shoulder right there. That's how much that wind, because it wasn't spiraling, it was like a knuckleball to him. I'm sure Nebraska is very aware of Furman. They bunch on the Nebraska left side on this kickoff. Furman says, let me try it again, and here he comes. Not that time. Now at the 16, and let's get an update from John in New York. Brent, San Diego State will not go away from the Wolverines on the road. Michael Franklin, Jeff Webb. This one will cover 12 yards for the touchdown. And Michigan's lead is cut down to just three. It's 17-14. More than that at halftime, Brent. Yeah, John, so a three-touchdown underdog doing a good job in Ann Arbor today. San Diego State coming in. Braden blows with the Wolverines. And here, the pit offense has to do something. Nine total yards of offense here in the first half. Nine is all. That's right. They try Mulkey for a yard, and Ira Cooper, senior linebacker from Omaha. We welcome you to Pittsburgh, the new era of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Turnovers have plagued Pittsburgh. A couple of interceptions, fumble on a punt, and as a result, Nebraska leads it by 10. 17-7, second down and long, and the Nebraska defense, the black shirts are smothering the Panthers. That time the short pass, complete to the 22-yard line. Eric Gill, the tight end. We'll break here. Speaking of passing in Nebraska, how many former Nebraska quarterbacks have thrown a touchdown pass in the NFL, and who threw the most, all right? How many former Nebraska quarterbacks have thrown a touchdown pass in the NFL? Mm. Folks out there. Now you would sense Nebraska. it's going to be a low you know number, what? right? You know what? This guy in Omaha's got it already. I can <laughs> no. Oh, man. Sam, push the buzzer. Okay. Third down. And right side tackle move this time. Dale Williams, number 74, flinched. Four offense, five yard penalty, third down. Well, that goes from third and three or four now to third and long. Yeah, well, Walt Harris working with a uh, with a young team, and, uh, and we ask him the problems that that creates. Well, we have to be real careful in how much we do because they they can't absorb very much, and they don't understand how important all the details are, you know, and that's the learning curve. That is indeed a learning curve, and it is proving to be a very steep one here. Palco down at the 15-yard line. Pittsburgh forced to punt. 
Rude was in on top of him. And the uh, Pontiac high performance drive summary. Yeah, Pelko's limping off again. Look at that. He got busted up bad quarterback. against Ohio. 16 total yards of offense here in the first half. Five running and 11 passing. And they are finding Nebraska to be a different breed of cat than Ohio here today. Russell almost blocked. Man. Man, he came flying out of it. Good roll for the Panthers. To the 30-yard line. How, how, how did Bullocks miss that one? He had it nailed. We'll take a break with Nebraska up by 10. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football brought to you by Pontiac. Vote for this week's Pontiac Game Changing Performance at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. The U.S. Postal Service with more new ways to use us than ever before the U.S. Postal Service is working for you. And Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. Sophomore Joe Daly brings the Huskers back up to the line. 10-point lead here in the first half. Green goes in motion. Play fake. Daly rolling to the left. Going to keep it. And battles for a first down. Good run by the quarterback. Let's go back to that last sack by Pittsburgh. Barrett Rude, the middle linebacker, just runs right over Kirkley right here. Rude starts right in the middle. Look at a little stunt up front. Comes in. Running back hits him. That's Timmy Bra Timmy Murphy, the running back, and runs right over him into Pelco and uh, landed on his hip, and we'll see how he is. First down and 10. Tight end flexes and then comes in motion. And this a lot of play. And, uh, you know, Jack Roots been down there watching. Jack, Jack, how is Tyler? Well, Brent, some medical attention was offered to him, and uh, Tyler decided to wave it off. He kind of walked off whatever the perceived injury was. I think right now he's so tight, he's starting to get down on himself, spending a lot of time by himself. And talking to the coaches before the game, Gary, you know they all mentioned the fact that he's got to learn that he can't win the game by himself, that there is no I in team. He's got to get over it and start worrying about the next play, not being frustrated by his poor play. And let's remember that Luke Getze, the quarterback he beat out, has dropped out and uh, wants to transfer. Wanted to go to Akron. Pittsburgh did not give him permission to do that. Here comes the draw play Ooh. to the 41-yard line. Tyrone Gilliard's at time number 31. A strong safety got a real good cleanup on that play. You watch the Nebraska offense, and the strategy behind the shifting is to keep the defense off balance. One more look at the draw play to Ross. You'll see it gets wrapped around the legs by Sessions number 17 and then cleaned up by number 31 Gilliard. They move, they shift, they change the formation two or three times when they do the package. Play fake. Daly. And he's tight in for a first down inside the 45-yard line. He went to Matt Harry and the junior from Pierce, Nebraska. This is a big-time throw by Joe Daly right here. Harrion's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He knows it, but he has to throw the ball sidearm. He's going to get blades, I believe, in his face. Coming out, throws it right to the outside. What a throw. That's a nice play. You can see Daly growing with this offense. Keeps the interceptions down. He's moving the ball. I thought he did a lot of good things. Yes, he did. Uh, Southern Miss, and then they come back and uh, run Ross straight ahead with it. I think that the uh, the Big 12 North, as the season wears on, depending on what the weather is for those games late, that's wide open in there. I, this, this team is going to be a real factor in that Big 12. I'm very impressed with all the shifting, and we're not seeing any illegal shifting. This is a pretty well-disciplined offense I'm looking at here with a good running back. I thought Daly did more good things yeah. than bad things. I know the inter the interceptions are, are horrible. They came at the wrong time. Bad fumble, things like that. But the young man's sticking with it. And good fake right here. Got a man. It goes to Harry and again for a first down. It's, I just think it's impressive. And while we're talking about quarterbacks at Nebraska, let's go back to the Aflac answer. There are the four, only four 
<laughs> Former Nebraska quarterback since one of the TD pass in the NFL. And Vince Ferragamo leading the way with 76. Vince moved on to the Rams, took the Rams into a Super Bowl, lost to Terry Bradshaw and the Pittsburgh Steelers out in the Rose Bowl. And Nebraska comes right back with a running play on first down. The, the play calling, uh, you know, it's been good. It's a variety of looks, Gary. I think you've made the observation. Yep. Callahan's sticking with a lot of different things. The West Coast offensive play calling is based on calling an off-balance play calling is what they like to refer to it. You want to keep the defensive guessing that on any call, you're able to do anything. Any one of your five receivers have a possibility of getting the ball. It's like having a well-schooled basketball. Any guy can shoot. Well, any guy can catch a ball in this offense, and that's what makes it good. And Callahan uh, has had a lot of experience in the college game. Came to Nebraska, of course, from the Oakland Raiders. And they use timeout. Daily and Grover talk to the coach. This is not your uh, usual Nebraska, is it? 15 yeah. <laughs> pass plays already in the first half. And what a change a year makes with this particular offense. They were 114th out of 117th throwing the ball. And the Air Force, Navy, and Rice the bone teams finishing behind them. They will not be dead last this year. That is for sure as Green checks in as the eye back. Second down. Toss play. Greenwald leads the way, and this will make it third and short. So we talked about Callahan, who once was assistant at Illinois, working with Walt Harris. But you can see where he's been after leading the Raiders in the Super Bowl, coming to Nebraska. He also was a very good line coach with the Philadelphia Eagles, out of the Chicago area. Kevin Cosgrove and Hey Cosgrove, he worked together at Wisconsin. Right. He was a line coach for Barry Alvarez. So good experience in the uh, college. He's been a hit with the folks in Nebraska. Of course, there's some of the nicest football fans in the country. You can't get along with Nebraska football fans. You can't get along with anybody. Third down and short for the Huskers. There's that play fake down one. And Daly going for the end zone. Touchdown on the bootleg. Off balance play calling. Third and an inch. You know Callahan was probably going to take two shots at it. We take what we want. That is the strategy. Remember, they scored with this running play down on the goal line. This time, every Pittsburgh defender is inside the hash, and I could have made this one happen. You know what Callahan's saying to himself? When I had first and goal down there, I wish I had used that one well, yeah, time. It could have been, but it, they, he, right now he's got more yards. Play callers <laughs> always second-guess themselves. <laughs> if we don't do it for him, as the Angeles tacks on the extra point. Callahan and uh, the Cornhuskers have got it on cruise control right now. Dominating 24-7. Here's today's Biz Hub Fan Scan, brought to you by Konica Minolta. Well, work in progress with uh, the great Larry Fitzgerald down in Arizona. Rod Rutherford has moved out of the quarterback spot. You can see just uh, how much this offense is struggling. Only uh, less than 50 yards a week ago against Ohio. And uh, here only 11. Lost Chris Wilson, too, a very underrated tight end that went to the Chiefs, didn't I, I yes. believe? Yes. on the injured list yes. right now. Chiefs were using him as an H-back. Yep. Dick Vermeer likes him a lot out there. Fielded at the 11 by Kirkland. Bounces off a tackle to a crease. And finally brought down at the 37-yard line. And, of course, a reminder now. Second game of the doubleheader, you'll see one of these two games, Oregon, Oklahoma. Oklahoma stalking that BCS title. Ohio State and North Carolina State. Can the Buckeyes survive again? Great game against North Carolina State a year ago. But Phillip Rivers has moved on. He's now in San Diego. Overtime classic a year ago. First and ten. Paco running the toss play with Kirkley, who just returned that kickoff. But... Uh, only able to squeeze out about a yard as Smith, the junior from yeah. Macon, Georgia, makes the stop. Lakeven Smith that time, uh, inside defensive tackle, just defeated his man. And that, that, it starts to mount up. I mean, you can talk about the quarterback and the receivers being young, 
But then you start getting defeated inside by your centers and guards getting beat by defensive tackles. It's not a great matchup inside for Pittsburgh, and they're having trouble because of youth and inexperience throwing the ball. It starts to look real ugly right now. Pittsburgh with only one first down against this Husker D. Remember, it was a kickoff return that put them on the scoreboard. And now they go to the back. They switch Tim Murphy from fullback back to tailback. And he can play either spot. And he runs out close to a first down. That was good for the offensive line that time for Pittsburgh. They ran right into the teeth of the zone blitz and made it work. Nebraska gave that same look that they intercepted the ball on before, and this time it was a run play, and they ran right into the teeth of it and get it to third and short. Let's see if they can squeeze out their second first down. Cherno checks in at fullback. Palco straight ahead. Behind the right guard for his first down. And of course, coming up in the Valvoline halftime show, you will be joined John Craig and uh, former Notre Dame All American Aaron Taylor. And uh, they'll tell you what's going on with Maryland and West Virginia. West Virginia favored to win the Big East. Boston College impressive last night at home over UConn. Uh, Pittsburgh, obviously, a work in progress that we're looking at right here. We'd be tempted to say that West Virginia and BC right now are the class of the Big East with Miami having moved already to the ACC. Play fake by the left-hander. Firing deep to double coverage, and there's his third interception. Picked off by Josh Phillips. The free safety is at it again. One of the intercept leaders in college football a year ago. He picks off another one here. Let's Josh take a look Bullock. at Josh. You talk about a guy that just has a nose for a football. You got to be a special pet kind of guy here. Can't like quickness all over a big hitter. And then this is what differentiates this guy. Great hands. When that ball goes into his area, he's as good as the wide receivers. Cardinal Sin here throwing the ball down the middle with a free safety in the middle of the field. First thing you learn, throw the ball down the middle, find the free safety. Palco knew that. He's been coached by his dad in high school. You teach him to the high school kid. Josh Phillips had 10 interceptions a year ago, the All-American. He comes back with another one today. They had a good secondary here. We showed it. More interceptions than Pittsburgh's receivers had receptions coming into the year. It'll be a first out to 36. player for the Panthers being helped out. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, Bill Callahan and uh, we asked him about the transition from the NFL to college. This has been a very smooth transition and that has to do with the type of system that you bring in uh, whether it's dealing with your coaching staff, the administration of your practices, how you deal with players in your team. All, all of that has to do with experience. Uh, one of only five coaches now to take a head coaching job in the college ranks after leading an NFL team to a uh, Super Bowl. And uh, he may have wound up with the best job of any of the yeah. five, I might add. And his uh, team did win nine games last year, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. First down and ten at the 36-yard line off the fake. Down middle! Almost gave it right back. Now, we mentioned the other four and uh, the jobs that they took, and we will... Uh... There they are. Bobby Ross, of course, now with Henri. Bill Walsh came out briefly with Stanford. Of course, Greg at SMU and uh, George Allen at Long Beach State. So Bill Callahan gets an opportunity with Nebraska, and Nebraska, one of those schools that, of course, thinks in terms of national championships, not Big 12 North titles. And the, the handoff penalty flag flying 
and Ross to the 30-yard line. We've got a penalty, probably a holding call thrown by the umpire. And uh, Jack, uh, I think Callahan uh, is off to a good start at Nebraska. Oh, indeed he is, Brent. But when you wonder, how do you go in and introduce the West Coast offense to quarterbacks that we've been talking about, like Joe Daly, that were recruited to be really more rushers? Offense. Ten yards assessed in the previous spot. Remain second down. What Bill Callahan did was simply get all of the tapes, all the coaches' tapes from the 2003 Oakland Raiders, issued them to all of his quarterbacks about the third day that he was there. He said, I want you to watch them in detail. They watched them so many times, Brent, that they actually, as quarterbacks, began to call the plays off the Raiders' plays that were called in 2003. Did not send them sound bites from Charles Woodson. <laughs> Second down. <No. laughs> they had a whole bunch for Jimmy. Daly. Straight back set in the screen. It was disrupted. And Daly will take it out of bounds. So at the bottom of the hour, you look at the swollen rivers here outside of Pittsburgh. And the key plays in this game have been turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. So far, Pittsburgh has turned it over four times in this game. Three interceptions and a fumble on a punt. As a result, Nebraska leads it 24 to 7. play on third down just to get a little field position back before the punt. Corey Ross had a problem all day with his quickness on this turf today. He cannot get the traction to make the cuts he's used to coming off that uh, artificial turf at uh, Lincoln. He just has not been able to make the sharp cuts he's used to. Alan Richardson will go back and try it again. The freshman punt returner standing inside the 10. Cooks the punter. Let's see if this one answers. See if this one knuckles or it's a spinner for him to make an easier catch. Ran up on it to the, uh, to the 12 yard line and uh, the great views today. Pittsburgh are being provided by the Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion. Captain Mitch Johnson at the controls of the Bloomin' Onion, high above Heinz Field. Mitch, good traveler. We had him last week down south, down there in Clemson. So it'll be first and ten for the Panthers, who have only 24 yards of total offense here. Yeah, what an ugly line, huh? 18 plays, 24 yards, three turnovers on offense, and then they had the turnover on the punt. Falco. There for the first time is Joe Del Sardo, the walk-in wide receiver. Well, we had an opportunity. Uh, Jack Arood asked the uh, young quarterback what it was like uh, being the leader on offense in college ball. When you play quarterback, it's a little bit different at the collegiate level because you, you have to be so controlled crazy, you know, controlled craziness. And, and I think that, that uh, that's a big, big part to our offense. I think that we have to, you know, to, to just realize, you know what, it's going to click. It's going to click. Well, it has to start clicking for him. It's second down and 12. Straight back. Sideline incomplete, and it'll be third down. It's uh, been getting a lot of clicks, but so far it's been empty, empty chambers in the gun because nothing is, there's no bullets in there, just a lot of empty clicks so far. Palco has no one to throw to. The coverages are very sharp. The pass rush is a little bit overwhelming, and they can't run the ball. Brent, you call this one. This play right here? Yeah, oh, you're going to throw it. You can't, you can't run. You can't pass protect. And you guys can't get open. You got anything good in your You're going to throw it. <laughs> you're going to keep firing. And I'll tell you, he's going to get pressure on this play because Nebraska feels good about it. First down. One of the defenders slipped, and that allowed Greg Lee, their veteran receiver who's been in the doghouse, to pick up 25 yards and a first down, so certainly the most successful offensive play of the game. The Panthers' only touchdown coming on a kickoff return, hurrying against the clock here 
with 117, but perhaps that'll bolster their confidence. They need to find 86. Very surprised that Kevin Cosgrove that time did not bring pressure. Only a four-man rush. Out. Nebraska. Well, they will uh, discuss the situation right now with the defensive coaches and let us discuss it with Jack down below. Well, Brent, one of the great things, the University of Pittsburgh, of course, plays their games at Pitts at Heinz Field, but they also practice at the same place where the Pittsburgh Steelers practice. It's called UPMC Sports Complex. Steelers on one side and on the right side, the Pittsburgh Panthers. In fact, they share the same practice fields as well. The ones with the lights, of course, for Pittsburgh, those were the Steelers practicing. The only piece of equipment that they share between the Steelers and Pitt, the special rehab swimming station. And oh yeah, there's better parking spaces for the Steelers and better cars than for these Pitt players. Well, over there is the baseball stadium very nearby here, Jack, and uh, you can see the shared parking going on with the uh, football stadium. Terrific athletic complex. You can see just how high the river is down there to the right. That normally is a little park down in there that has been uh, flooded out. With record rain here in Pittsburgh, almost six inches. The aftermath of uh, Ivan the Terrible go, go, from the go, go off, horrible storm. Yes. First and ten. Halco. Did a wide open. He goes to the walk-on who earned his scholarship. And Joe Del Sardo, the sophomore, great story, picks up the first down. And for the first time, this offense is starting to look like something here. Not go finding open receivers, getting some blocking, taking off. That's almost nine yards right there. So by far the most impressive drive. I know that Nebraska's probably softened up here a little bit with a 24-7 lead inside of a minute, but they don't want to be too soft. They've been zoned every time so far, and Second. just a four-man rush. Have not brought the zone pack, blitz package. Well, the receivers, defended that time. receivers are just falling down all over the place. Defensive backs, as you called on a third down play, falling down. It's been a tough field out there. That time Chandler barely kept his feet. The defensive back slipping down. That's why that pressure of the rush going forward is so effective in the game instead of trying to read the quarterback's eyes. Somewhat surprised that Grixby, the freshman, over on the right corner as you look from the defensive side, has not been tested at all. He comes up for press now, one-on-one -on -one against the uh, left side receiver. Short drop against it on the slant for a first down. So Palco moving the ball, and he puts it back in the hands of Greg Lee with 38 seconds. And uh, at least Palco and the Panthers will have a drive to build on. They go in with, they can lift their heads a little bit after putting together this drive here late in the second quarter. Palco from the gun, throws that one away, stops the clock wisely with 31 seconds. He's taken a bit of a pounding here in the first half. Yeah, Gary. Wally Muhammad that time, number 55, I believe it was, coming in. See the pressure just as he lets his ball go. He has to throw it away. It's man coverage. No, I'm sorry, Bernard Thomas, number five, was the guy coming around the other side. Just came in and just gives 270, 6'4", 270, coming off the court on Palco. Didn't see any of those guys in high school. 6-4-2-7, the speed <laughs> rush ends. Second and 10, just inside the 40. Coming to corner, Blitz. It's picked up by the tackle. Shoot it underneath. Now, yeah, well thrown ball to the running back, Raymond Kirkley, who slipped out. But that was a very good pickup by the right tackle. Now, Walt Harris is in control of the timeout now. He called it even before Palco did. He was right with the official. He knew what he wanted to do if they didn't get the first down. He took the timeout. And we check in with John Saunders in New York. John. With Craig and Aaron, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, we're going to take a look at some of the mid-majors that might sneak into the BCS. Yeah, you got a real good name yeah. coming your way. Hey, we're going to talk about the West Coast offense. Coach Taylor thinks he can show you in passing play. And guys, are you kidding me? Miskin struggling at home against San Diego State? What's going on? I know, you'd think they'd bounce back after the game in Notre Dame, but it hasn't been that way. It's all coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, Brent. John, tell Aaron, freshman quarterback, freshman quarterback. Notre Dame over the last couple years has struggled. It happens. The big fella jumping on the Wolverines just because he got a win against them last week. 
Just 100, kidding, Aaron. 100,000 100, 100, 100, people agree with Aaron right now. <laughs> Third and two. One timeout left for Pittsburgh. Played it very conservatively, did Nebraska, until they reached about the 40-yard line, and now they brought the corner blitz, the inside blitz, the zone blitz on three successive plays. 20 seconds. Got one on one. Lee inside. Incomplete. They're waving it off, I believe. Both the back judge and the side judge both called that incomplete. Must have hit the ground very clearly. Lee, Lee could have made this Did play. Did not hesitate on right. the call. Take a look here. Yeah. Could not Looks get like his he hands underneath it with his it. body. Yeah. Couldn't get his hands underneath it. Had the matchup they wanted right there. The ball hits in between yeah. on dozen credit. Good call. Grigsby, the freshman, matched up against your most experienced receiver. And does not come up with the play. Fourth down. Pick up the first, but the clock as it's Lee to the 21-yard line. Stop it with nine seconds. Walt right there at that timeout. See, now you got a bit of a problem. You only have nine seconds left. And if you throw the ball anywhere but the end zone, the half is going to be finished on you. Of course, you could use that Miami play where you run on with a field goal. Well, I try a long field goal, which is what they're going to do. Yeah, you got to go right now. You got to make it 24 10 if you can. Now you're sitting on 14. You could make one throw to the end zone. You'd have time to get one throw to the end zone if you wanted to. Looking at four turnovers, I'd kick the field goal right now if I can. Well, how do you beat Nebraska if you don't try to beat Nebraska, is my point. You know, I, I, I think I'd take one throw to the end zone, give Lee a chance to make a play, and then kick the field goal. I suppose the defensive coordinator there, the right of the head coach. I throw the same ball against Grigsby, number 26, that I just did. Grigsby's very small, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, try to take one shot at him. Now, Russell, the punter, is the holder for Josh Cummings out of Newhall, California. Mike McGlynn is the snapper for this unit, at least he has been. Number 75, this would be a 38-yard, the wind is at his back. Distance here should not be a problem. What he needs a good snap, hold, and accuracy. <laughs> Looks like he's got it right down the middle. And he's made it a two touchdown game. Harris does not hesitate in making the field goal decision. Something to build on at halftime for Walt Harris. Last drive. There's a little more spring in Palco's step after that drive. He's over there talking to Flacco, the backup. He's taken a bit of a pounding at the hands of this Nebraska defense. But the one thing sometimes we forget about college football players, and I'm as guilty of this as anybody, these are just kids. And they learn and they improve. And, uh, things get better for them as time moves on. This is not easy playing a Nebraska defense. Absolutely There's not. There's some good football players on this Nebraska team. I, I, right now, I make this team the sleeper in the... Uh, it was easy to be down on them. New system. I, I think the question that the West Coast offense has, and Tom Osborne once uh, discussed it with me, is going to be the weather in November when you cut off half the field against that passing game. But uh, right now, of course, conditions across the Midwest, good. Why not put it up? Fielded on the four-yard line. Here is Green. He's uh, short of the 25-yard line. As, uh, seconds tick away here in the first half. So it'll be fun to see what happens here. The uh, second half, uh, overall, Nebraska's West Coast offense, impressive, and we send it out to Jack. 
Coach, how important was that last drive to get three on the board? That was real important for a quarterback. Hopefully he's not too banged up, but it was real important. Concerned about his athletic ability in the second half? Did he get beat around? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. He was limping pretty good coming off. He's a tough guy. What do you change in the second half, though? Because your offense really hasn't gotten on track. Well, we had tor tor a terrible field position. Our defense played really, really good considering the field position they had. And we dropped the punt. That was huge, you know. As well as we, we let a punt go. We got been backed up. Like I said, horrible field position. We got to get a better field position. We got to make it happen better. Thanks, Coach. Brent, turnover's a killer for Pittsburgh. Yeah, Jack, uh, no question about it. And good insight there from head coach Walt Harris as he goes on into the locker room. Speaking insight, we'll be hearing from John Saunders and a gang in New York. It's 24-10, Nebraska here at the half, and now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary, as you might expect from the score. Nebraska is dominating the statistics in this game as Pittsburgh has turned it over four times. So I ask you, Mr. Danielson, what's out of whack in this game? <laughs> well, as bad as it looks, it, it could have been a lot worse because look at the first five possessions of this football game. 24 yards, three interceptions in, and as you pointed out, they put one together at the end. Yeah. I thought Nebraska was a little in the prevent for a while, and I think with a 24-10 lead, the key is Pittsburgh gets the ball. But Can they do it again? Nebraska walked out of the locker yeah. room to start the second. You didn't like the body language. No, I didn't like that because it seems to me that the way they've dominated the first half, they feel they got this game. You know, and you know how it is. I mean, um, one more pass, you get one in the end zone, somebody slips and falls, anything can happen, but... Nebraska feels they can do what they want on offense. They feel good about themselves. Uh, Pittsburgh handles the ball to start the second half. They won the coin flip. They deferred. So they will get the first possession. Falco's best drive of the game was the last one. And again, Nebraska bunches the kickoff team. And they've had one return for a touchdown against them. This could go out of bounds. Penalty. Bad way to start the second half. Falco and the Panthers getting at least decent field position at the start. And... Uh, Let's go down to uh, Jack. Uh, what'd you hear down there at the intermission? Well, Brent Gary was exactly right. When you look at the way the players came out, they looked like they could have their way in the second half. But don't blame Bill Callahan and his coaching staff for that. He got up on them about some poor play on special teams during the halftime break. He said offense he's pleased with, defense as well, but he challenged the special teams to play better in the final 30, 30 minutes. And the uh, special teams, Pittsburgh, he was certainly referring to that kickoff return. How about Pittsburgh? Touchdown, but Pittsburgh bobbled a couple of punts there, one they turn over. And they also came out with only 10 men in a huddle, and it's going to get them behind here, not being able to check off. No! Start with Kirkley on the toss play, and he picks his way as Rude comes over for about three yards. Barrett Rude is so quick at reading the play. I mean, he was there as that play was uh, was forming. He was outside turning it back in. You can see why a guy dominates making tackles like that. Barrett Rude just reads it, does it, gets there, and makes the tackle. Second down. They'll put Lee in the slot out to the right side. three here comes the blitz and it'll be third down and long so the uh, safety Josh Bullocks will meet up with his free safety spot to make the hit they made their move late on that play Gary as he was yeah. down to about two seconds on that play clock you heard it check two that was a check to a running play it was probably a run call to the left or right he checked to the right now let's see if Nebraska comes with pressure versus what they did at the end of the half. It'll be four or five men. They're off the slot, man. Paco does not look in that direction. Threw it in the dirt, so it's three and out. And after receiving favorable field position because of the kickoff out of bounds, they are forced to punt it away. He wanted to throw that ball to Raymond Kirkley, number 43, as running back, but Barrett Rood was right there in his throwing lane. Watch Rude go right with the running back. No zone this time. They play man. Wants to go to him. Can't do it. And then throws off balance to his downfield man. Santino Panico is back deep to return this punt for the Huskers. Boomer by Gressel. Fair catch. And a nice catch at the, about the 13, 14 yard line. And that's where Nebraska will put it in play. Well, let's uh, meet Joe Daly up close and personal. 
kid playing football, I used to pretend I was Jim Kelly. My favorite movie is Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. My favorite historical figure is Martin Luther King Jr. Because actions speak louder than words. Young man from New Jersey running the West Coast offense here for the Huskers. Remember, Joe Daly ran an offense similar to Eric Crouch in high school. They wanted to get a little more passing into the offense, even with Craig Solich. Run down from behind that time by number nine, J.J. Horn. This is the key for Paul Rhodes, defensive coordinator, and Walt Harris, the pit team. They must stop the running game. If they let Nebraska become a two-fisted boxer, as we look at Paul Rhodes right there, the outstanding young defensive coordinator who Brent went through so much last year. Remember, this team was primed to make a run at the national championship but couldn't stop anyone a year ago. There's a nice fake by Daly. And Harrion can't hang on. Matt Harrion, normally sure-handed, wide open in space that time. Can't hand it to him any better than that. Right on the, the, the run, like the passing the baton and track, that thing was lofted out there. Harrion could have grabbed that, turned up field, and got the first down very simply. Now third down, and the Pittsburgh defense gets ready for this expected pass play. Can they get a sack, though? Only 21 a year ago, they have not been a sack team. But they have not turned it over today, Nebraska, after turning it over repeatedly last week. Daly's in trouble. Sacked. What Obviously, in yep. that situation, it was discussed during the week with Daly. Sometimes it is better to take the sack than to throw it up for grabs and turn the ball over. I really like the pit coming with the safety that time. You need to put pressure on the quarterback. You do it by bringing the man from the secondary, the strong safety Gilliards that time, and that's what allowed the pit defense to make a stand. This time Sam Cook backed up in the end zone. Richardson, the return man. Short punt. Unlike, picked up on the bounce by Richardson to the 48. Unlike the first half, as we start the second half, it is Pittsburgh winning the battle of field position. They'll have a short field to work with, but can they do anything with it? Well, a year ago in this situation, you would have been looking for wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald now playing football on Sunday afternoon, so Palco... The young quarterback will work with Kirkley, the running back, hands it off to him for a couple of yards. But you go back and see the kind of production that Fitzgerald had for Walt Harris and Pitt for two years. Gary, I can still remember this one against Texas A&M. Not many guys can make this catch and make it look like this. The toughest catch for a receiver, dead over your head, and make it look so easy. That's why he's making a millions of dollars playing pro football. Remember this Pitts offense also lost Broken Brawl, their other receiver, Princell Broken Brawl. So they've got a lot of young guys. And there. Allen with the yes. wrist problem. He was a return man for him, second and 10. There is a Fitzgerald playing college, but not here at Pitt. And they hand it off to Kirkley. And we asked Walt about Larry's brother Marcus, who is at Marshall. And a week ago, watch down the bottom of your screen. Marcus caught three passes for 16 yards. I got the feeling they didn't want Marcus compared to Larry, and that's why Walt uh, didn't think it would be the best deal. What do you think? It's always the touchiest thing when you got a brother of a star. What do you do? It's a good thing they got Larry first. That's what I say. Third down for Palco. Two very conservative play calls. Now a toss play. Going to run for it, and they've got the first down. Harris keeps it on the ground. Kirkley crosses the 35-yard line, and uh, I'm not sure Nebraska was expecting that call. Yeah, Wally Muhammad that time completely unblocked in man line of scrimmage, number 55. Look at this. Nobody even touches him. Clear play to the outside, puts a bead on it, and runs right by the running back. That's why you pick up a first down. If you're the coach there, you're saying, wait a second, I got the perfect defensive end at the point of attack. Nobody blocks him, and they get a first down. Uh-oh. Well, Murphy was dinged up in the first half. A Cherno, the fullback, and the quarterback pulled out. He did. That's going to cost he him did. five. Palco pulled back too early. 
Legal procedure Dead at the ball. quarterback. Ball start. Charge to number three of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Jack, what do, you, uh, what do you hear down below about Tim Murphy? Well, I don't think you're going to see him the rest of the game, Brent. They say he's suffering from a high ankle sprain. They tried to retape it during halftime. But uh, you should expect Raymond Kirkley to carry most of the load in this second half. Yeah, and uh, they're also uh, using the backup fullback in there, Cherno. No! First down and long. Oh, oh, he threw it up for grabs. Loose ball. That was going to be an option pass, and he got hit so Cherno, hard. know that backup fullback, who we just mentioned, able to pounce on the ball in that situation you got to keep your just take your lick and go down yeah well I, the turnout went the wrong way on the play so he better go get the fumble on the play because that was going to be an option play to the left and he went to the right so you better be get back there and fall on it <laughs> now he's off on the sideline that's a good way to get to the sideline well, this number's right and this number's up second down <laughs> and 20. Pressure throws incomplete and Nebraska coming again. That zone blitz is just giving him so many problems, Pittsburgh. It's the same one over and over again. They overload the left side, drop the weak side end to the other side, and just overpower Pitt's offense. It would be easy to blame Palco for all the problems, but remember in the zone blitz, you need experienced receivers too. Yes. They'll know how to break their roots off immediately and go to that space. And most of these youngsters are freshmen, untested. Malcolm gets a little time here and waits for somebody to clear. There's a penalty flag as he throws it away. There is a penalty flag. Wow, Muhammad I, closing in again. I thought they held on the pass rush all the way. Pittsburgh did. I thought they grabbed inside. I think it was Titus Adams, number 96, got grabbed. Kind of a long explanation with the the fellows on the side. Nebraska will decline this, I'm sure. Yep, personal oh, foul going back. the other way. Ways. We are both siding fouls on the play. Holding 56. Personal foul. Defense hands to the face. Replay third down. Well, Charles Spencer's going to say thanks a lot. You got my holding call. Who hit the quarterback in the face? Let's see. Palco lets it go. Looks like number 55, Muhammad. Well, it couldn't have been on the quarterback, right? It had to be downfield to one of the defensive backs. Third down. Safety valve swing pass that time, and uh, not much doing. Put it in the hands of Furman to return the kickoff for the touchdown in the first half. Good, solid tackle that time. Open field, know where the sideline is. Brothers did a nice job of knowing that he had help from the sideline and forced the back right to him and wrapped him up. Didn't try to knock him down with a block tackle. Wrapped him up and forced the punt. <laughs> Wrestle. Catch and they'll let it go. And it's down on the one yard line. There's a penalty flag down. If it's against Nebraska, unless it's a personal foul, it won't be a first down. Well, you got to think that, that Pittsburgh will decline this one because it's going to be a five yarder and take it right there on the one. Don't Absolutely. You? Yep. Run into the kicker, number 19, defense. The penalty is declined. First down, Nebraska. So now Nebraska must come out from its own one-yard line. We're back in uh, Nebraska. Huddled in the uh, shadow of the goalpost down there. I mean, they are inside the one-yard line. What do you see with this ball? Is you can't be any closer to the goal line. Now, Tony, Tony Dorsett would have to score on this one. This Absolutely. Is <laughs> 
Pittsburgh can't get any further back. Speaking of Pittsburgh legends. Oh, They're going to throw. And they do. <laughs> First down at the 16-yard line, Ross Pilkington. And what about the Wolverines? Let's go to John. Well, Brent, who will be this week's singular All-America Player of the Week? It could be Braylon Edwards of Michigan. Three touchdown receptions already. Now, you can vote by text messaging player to the number 64444. We're going on ESPN.com, keyword singular. All right, John, let me nominate Joe Daly. Back from a nightmare at home. He's 11-17, 142. Hasn't turned the ball over here today threw a pass from his own end zone when they were backed up inside the one yard line now they come back with a running play and that's the confidence that callahan has in number 12 to throw it on first down couldn't you just hear the gas from nebraska when he dropped back from the six inch line on first down and threw that ball right there it was like tv sets all over nebraska land going, what what first down pass from your own end zone. <laughs> Second down, and there's movement floor. Put that one on the highlight and recruiting film right there. Proud of the snap. False start. 77 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. The offensive linemen had their heels in the end zone on that play. You go down, you run an easy pitch and catch. Pittsburgh never thought it would come in, coming on that play, and you're out there to run. I've been waiting all day to say his name. Who jumped? <laughs> <laughs> FYA. <-A> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry to have to point that out. Oh. Go. Second down. Seppo. That's good. Seppo. <laughs> Second and ten. Draw play. And there's Horn. 15 hands to the left side. Down at the 20. That was Revis, the freshman. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Pacific Life offering insurance, annuities, and investments. And Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Here comes third down. Nebraska would love to keep the Huskers pinned up. Down a couple of touchdowns in this game. Three receivers left, three receivers right. Now will they go in motion again? No. Pump fake. One-on-one -on -one left side. Pilkington deflected. Incomplete. And that was Revis, the freshman. Nice job by Revis. They tried to get him on that play. Remember all those short slant plays they've run on him? This time they ran the slant and go. Revis did not bite. Good call against a young freshman, but Revis was up to the task and almost came up with the intercept. Great athlete, and what did uh, Walt Harris tell us? He's a great basketball recruit also. And uh, may someday play basketball. Here, Jamie Dixon and the team getting their championship Big East rings at halftime. Oh, Cook booms one. And Richardson. Oh, Gets smacked. Oh, man. Ball taken away, but it whistled down at the 37-yard line. So Jamie Dixon and the uh, Panthers won the Big East regular season championship. And coach and players getting their championship ring. Big honor for those fellows. Time out. 623 to go in the third quarter, 24-10, Nebraska leading Pittsburgh. Panther ball coming out from their own 37-yard line. Paco under pressure. Down at the 20-yard line, could not escape Daniel Bullocks on the blitz. He cleaned up and made the stop, number 14. Stuart Bradley, sophomore linebacker from Salt Lake City, disrupting the play initially, and that's a loss of 12 yards. Same zone blitz package that they use in the nickel they used on first down here. It's a good run defense. You bring keep from the weak side. You drop that strong side, this, uh, the tight end side linebacker into the flat and it has given Pittsburgh fits all game. Paco 10 to 21, 73 yards, three interceptions. Second and a bunch. Over the middle, 
incomplete, but only for about a yard or two. And Stewart gladly making his presence felt comes up with the hit. So at the bottom of the hour, Nebraska leading 24-10, taking advantage of four Pittsburgh turnovers. Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us here today. Nebraska of the Big 12 against Pittsburgh of the Big East. And uh, the Big East will have a brand new look next season with three new teams coming in. And Boston College going to the ACC, joining Virginia Tech and Miami. And the officials here at Big East crew get it straightened out. It's third and 19. You got to give it to Bernard Thomas, number five for Nebraska that time. He was matched up against Rob Petiti, number 78, and just bull rushed him right back into the quarterback and really Save put the game pressure on him. Clock to 514. Both game clock and ready for play clock. The start on the ready. And while they get ready, let's remind you that ABC Tuesday, the one hour season premiere of My Wife and Kids. They're going to Vegas for a star-studded dream vacation. See what happens on my wife and kids as they come back here on third down. Palco, middle, incomplete. Uh, first, the defender had a shot at it, and then the uh, wide receiver. That was actually a pretty good throw from Palco on that one. That ball could have been caught, and all you had to do was turn around and spin for a first down and coughed it up when you're playing Nebraska. You finally get some pass protection. You got to make that one count. Palco delivered a little behind, but the receiver didn't help him at all. Panico back deep again. Russell punting. Scoreless second half so far. Panico steps up on this one from the 30. The 37 yard line. Let's go back to that last play. You see good protection finally for Tyler. Gets the step up in the pocket. Needs a lot of yards. Looking both right and left. Spots his guy. Throws it slightly behind. Receiver has to come up with a play. And you got Chandler right there. The freshman just coughs it. He could have caught that and just spun back for a first down, I think. See a little bit of slippage, though. Really kept him off balance, but I'm sure that's one he'd love to be able to kick. Daly and the Huskers take over. Much better field position than last time. Five foot six inch Ross crosses the 40 yard line and the end of the arms of Postal. Ah, uh, what about Maryland and uh, West Virginia, John? What's happening? Right, as you know, Maryland got West Virginia's number twice last year, including a bowl game. They're trying to do it again. Trailing 10 to three, Joel Statham, those 27 yards to Derek Fenner, touchdown, and the Terps come back to tie the game. Nobody beats us in their house. <laughs> Here's Daly on a pitch. Big run. Here's Green going wide left. And first down across the 40-yard line. That's a 17-yard run by Green. Just for all you Nebraska fans that love tradition, this is about as close as you're going to get to the option. A one-step fake, throw it out there, go around the end. That's a staple of the offense now in the NFL, and Callahan brings it, and that's the way to get outside without getting your quarterback beat on. And timeout is called, and Daly will go over and talk about it. Well, let's go to our Dodge defensive playbook here, Gary, while we've got a moment. It's been pressure all game, but Barrett Rude, the outstanding linebacker for Nebraska, comes in. Watch him overpower. It's one thing to get a guy free. It's another thing to just rush in there and use your ability to make the play. You'll hear a lot of defensive coaches, Brent, say, listen, I can't get you free every time. If there's somebody in front of you, knock them over. And that's what Barrett did. Yeah, Gary, I was uh, referring to Coach Ralph Friedgen and that armor commercial where he says, nobody beats us in our house. And he's almost like an actor. And I go back to it. He couldn't get a job because they didn't think he looked like a coach on the sideline. And now, here he is in the middle of commercials. He's your prototypical coach. I mean, he's unbelievable. It is amazing. You know, uh, for years, he wondered if he could do it and get one. And now, all of a sudden, he gets one. Joe Tiller, the same way at Purdue, remember? Yeah, he absolutely. finally got his shot. 
it's not the cover of the book, it's the book, right? Isn't that the truth? Hey, a good doubleheader on ESPN, folks. This is, this is one you're going to want to see. Notre Dame at Michigan State. That's 7 Eastern. You got HD, you'll see it. And then the number one team in the nation, Matt Leinart and the USC Trojans against BYU. How do you think uh, May and uh, Alberts are handling this game over there watching this one? <laughs> I'm sure May is down on his offense. <laughs> First down and 10. Bring the end around, and Pittsburgh did not give ground. Willie Amos was the end around, a former defensive back, seeing some action here today. But Postal, look at linebacker, and I think we've got a penalty flag down. Those slow developing plays, the tendency for the offensive line is to try to hold their guy and make it go, and that's, he always, as a quarterback, remember coach used to tell me, remind him, not the hold. Holding, Holding. number 64 in the offense, 10 guys assessed from the previous spot, it remains first down. That's the center, Kurt Mann. You know, I hope, speaking of center, is incognito, gone from Nebraska. And if he's listening, I hope the young man gets his act together. No more problems on or off the field. Controls that anger. He's a good football player. And talented, and, uh, isn't he? Yeah, he can, he can make a living at this game. Play fake by Daly's a good one. Incomplete. Well, let's find out about the Canes. Let's go to New York, and here's John again. Well, Brent, the Canes aren't quite having a close one like they did last week against Florida State. Brock Berlin having a good day. Sets up in the pocket. Sees his man. Daryl Jenkins takes it the rest of the way in for the touchdown. In Miami right now over La Tech. 34 nothing at halftime. Yeah, John, you know that... Uh... That closing drive against Florida State and winning overtime might do a lot for Brock Berlin's confidence. For Nebraska, the draw play. Ross crosses the 45-yard line. He was down even though Pittsburgh comes away with the ball. Great aerial shots today of our swollen Allegheny River. Off to my right. Compliments Outback Steakhouse. Proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl. The Outback Steakhouse airship high above. Looking down here at Heinz Field. You know, Brent, we've talked a lot about the Nebraska offense, but the Pittsburgh defense has held in. This is a team that's got smashed all year. They've been put in a lot of bad positions, and Paul Rhodes told this defense this year, if you don't tackle, you won't play. And I think they've hung in there well tackling. Down. Third down. down. Daly under pressure from that defense. And trying to make the most of it. And uh, Nebraska will punt it away inside the 40. Uh, Jack, uh, what about the Panther D? We are talking about Paul Rhodes. He issued another challenge to his defense just a little while ago. He sat them all down and he said, look, you've got to get this team, Nebraska offense into third down. They're doing a pretty good job there. And then he asked each one, are any of you nervous? They all said, no. Are any of you scared? He said, no. He said, well, let's go out and win this ball game for the offense. And uh, Still ball we, game. Get, we get word that uh, Flacco down below has been warming up. Joe Flacco. Shanked it. And uh, this could help Pitt. He hit that one as bad as Phil Mickelson did on the 18th hole. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what a tee shot that was. <laughs> what were you thinking for? 15-yard punt. Flacco. And here he is. Here comes uh, Steve Bime, one of our cameramen, picked up the fact that number 15, Joe Flacco, Tyler Paco, will go to the sidelines. So, man, having Getsy decide to leave, he would be the quarterback right now. No Flacco. question about it. Now it's first and ten for the redshirt freshman from Ottawa, New Jersey. So here is Joe Flacco under center. You know he figures to hand it off on first down. And Kirkley breaks a couple of tackles. Strong run to the 31-yard line. And uh, Jack uh, Flacco under fire here. Brett, the inside skinny on Joe Flacco is he was a pretty good player when he was in high school. In fact, he was a three-year starter for Audubon, New Jersey, passed for 5,100 yards, and in one game he threw for 471 yards, just in one game. And the coaches tell me he has a better arm than Tyler Flacco. Second down. Out of the eye formation. Coming right back with Kirkley, will not get it. 
the first down is Ira Cooper, a linebacker. And uh, John, what's the situation with uh, Virginia Tech? Well, Brent, this is their first official game in the ACC, and it's against Duke, which is usually a pretty good way to start things off. Brian Randall, 11 yards to Richard Johnson, and Virginia Tech's lead is now 34-7. to The Dukies are saying, John, wait till we get them at Cameron. Wait till we play the real sports. <laughs> Football doesn't count when you play Duke. Third down. Gonna throw the swing, and he didn't let go of it. Gonna try to get the first down. Barges for it there at the corner. That was a tough run. Sure was. Now, Jack said he might have a, a better arm than Palco. The thing I'm looking for, if he gets better pass protection than Palco, that might be more important. Palco doesn't, you know, doesn't, isn't seeking any medical help. He's standing there. You wonder if this was just a change he wanted to get some experience for Flacco. Walt Harris said he was going to play Flacco last week, week, but he never got a shot, so I wonder if you're just giving him a series here. It's a long season for a quarterback. Especially if the quarterback get has thrown on. three interceptions. <laughs> Getting beat on at the same time. First and ten. Kirkley and the get whipped up front. jumps the middle yeah. game. Adams. He's been he's been a monster all game. Yes, Adams. Has. They have not been able to handle him one on one. They've got a holding penalty on him. He's got that inside push, and uh, you know that's uh, we're talking to the Nebraska people. They said you know that inside they're about the same we've seen before. Cosgrove said at Wisconsin. Outside we're different, but the front seven is as good as he's ever had, and they've been showing it in this game. Third quarter comes to an end before the snap. And the Nebraska D standing tall here in the East. They've given up 32 rushing yards, 76 passing yards. They have intercepted three passes. Great defensive effort. Well, that is Meredith Howland, the son of the former basketball coach here at Pittsburgh. Ben Howland, who did it. Great job. I met daughter when I was... <laughs> Good-looking son. Yeah, Meredith. <laughs> Meredith doing a great uh, job down there. And of course, uh, Ben is now out at uh, UCLA. Mm -hmm. The basketball coach out there, he'll do a great job of recruiting. Dead ball, ball start, offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Well, the black shirts dominating uh, the football game. We showed you that defensive rollout. We went to the uh, the end of the quarter. Total yards, haven't given up a touchdown. The only touchdown scored by Pittsburgh was a kickoff return. Yeah, now, now before you, you know, anoint this defense as one of the greats in Nebraska, remember Ohio yelled this Pittsburgh defense, Pittsburgh offense pretty well too. So they've been struggling on offense. They really you know, have Pittsburgh. Yeah, watching Flacco, the one thing that stood out on that play, Gary, is how strong he is, not only on the run, but uh, it took a big effort right. to uh, to bring him down. Yeah, uh, but you know, Joe Montana could only lift about 120 pounds. <laughs> Strength and quarterbacks is really not in the same sentence. <laughs> Are you strong? And, 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 who <laughs> obviously, Mr. Danielson, uh, how much could you pump in that Purdue it room? It or with the Lions or with the Browns? We're trying to find some good things to say, but strength is not. <laughs> quick, kick. quick kick. Not very well uh, at that either. Palco, Palco's a better quick kicker. Uh, Both of them, the crowd didn't like it. Bad, it's bad, bad sign when you have to have two quick kicks in one game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's cute the so, uh, first time. John, what's happening in the other, uh, the other part of the state at Penn State, by the way? Well, Brent, they've got a young man by the name of Tony Hunt who's having a pretty good day. 34 yards on this carry against Central Florida. In 12 carries in the game, he has 119 yards and three touchdowns. And Penn State is running away 30 to 6. Ooh, Tony Hunt. Huh? All right, first down and 10. Adam Scott still being disciplined over there at Penn State, huh? So. Joe Daly. that toss outside and not this time. Pittsburgh jumped it. Postal, he's a senior from Keyport, New Jersey. Making the stop on green. There's Postal, he's played a good game today. You know, still 
I mean, I'm not just saying it. Still, it's just a 14-point game, two scores. I mean, Nebraska has dominated the game completely and really can't finish the game off. And I'm sure Callahan is telling the offense, let's finish this game. Second down and long. Incomplete, now it's third. You know, we talk about Callahan over there. Let's go back historic. And uh, there is Bob Devaney. He put the show on the road, moving from Wyoming down to Lincoln. And uh, he was very successful. Then there was Tom Osborne and Frank Solis. What they all share in common is that they were very successful their first year at Lincoln, all winning nine games. And now Callahan, one and one. And trying to close in on his second victory here. Gonna have to take a timeout, or they're gonna lose it. Third down. Now right, we've got a timeout, so we'll take a break. 24-10. Back with 14 minutes to go. It's 24-10. Nebraska leading Pittsburgh. Third down. Third daily in the Huskers. Incomplete. Cook again. Took a shot after he lost the handle. Josh Lay, the junior. Pilkington uh, shaking up. That ball was thrown way behind Pilkington that time, and he was defenseless as Josh Lay came up there and let it on him. What happens is receivers love that ball on the slant in front of them so they can get it and cradle it down. Execution. You see Lay, he reads it. He's closing behind defenseless Pilkington. He catches it right under his arm in a rib cage area right there. It's going to hurt. And uh, meanwhile, let's get an update from John. Brent, we said it at halftime, Marshall, the best 0-2 team in the nation. They're trying to stick it in here and tie Georgia. Fourth and one, Stan Hill, lobs it to the end zone, incomplete, turns it over on downs, Georgia with the ball, and a 10-3 lead. Meanwhile, Maryland has now grabbed the lead over West Virginia, 13-10, despite turning the ball over five times. A very interesting game unfolding there because... Uh, West Virginia, Boston College in particular, I and a BCS berth. Remember the uh, the Big East team without Miami or Virginia Tech this year? They get an automatic. And Boston College, in its last year in the conference, one of those teams with a shot, I think, nah, somebody better check. I'm not sure where the West Virginia game is this year. Uh, that'll be a big match in the Big East. Cook hangs one up for Richardson. Fumble again. Uh, he got him early this time, though. This one's going to be called. Yep, there's the flag. You yeah. bet. They threw it right away, Gary. Yeah, that one, uh, try to time it out the same way. See him just get just as he get it. The ball actually hit Rigoni as he came down on the play that time, and uh, that's an easy call. He's a good gunner, yes, Rigoni. He, is. he took that ball away from him that last time. They didn't give it to him. And, but, he, uh, and he split the, the two blockers. They had two guys on the gunner, Rigoni, that time, and he split them to get there. So we'll take a break, and uh, they'll march off the yardage against Nebraska. Like one of our cameramen just said, you've got to go with the better quick kicker, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back in. I think we've seen the end of that one, right? 24-10, though. Pittsburgh needs to put a drive together. Short passes, quick, five, six, eight yards per attempt. There you go. That's Furman. Didn't get the five there, and let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Let's take you back, and this is because Nebraska just jumping all over Palco in the first half. Tyler coughed up three interceptions. And believe me, if Nebraska could have finished all of them, this would be more lopsided than it is. But it's 24-10 Huskers with 13-15 to go. They lost yards on that swing pass. Paco complete short of the first down. Walt Harris's offense has always been known that they're willing to attack the middle of the field. That's what you have to do if you're going to throw the ball aggressively against Nebraska. They force you and funnel you inside. Now 
you have to have the experience to search out those linebackers and throw between them. Trying to keep Lee in the game. Three catches now for number 86. Make it four for 50 yards. This doesn't look right. Well, and over. Oh, boy. And a timeout as a result of it. The receivers were out of position. Block was running down, and Palco calls a timeout. If you look back on uh, Walt Harris's career here, this is eighth year. Considerable drop off, and uh, should he lose this one, he'd be 0 and 5 against uh, BCS schools in that second game. Deflected, and it's fourth down as Muhammad gets a paw on it. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Pepsi, it's the cola, and Aflac. Ask about it at work. Real interesting there. You know they have respect for that defensive line when it's third and less than a yard and you go four wide receivers and throw a slant. Nice play by Muhammad jumping. Quick set, jump up and try to knock that short pass down. Russell. Punting again for the Panthers. Booms a beauty. Panico inside the 20 makes the catch. But we have talked about the Big East. So let's show you. Until last year, of course, Miami and Virginia Tech were members. They have dropped out, but Boston College still in the conference. They will leave at the end of this year. And three new schools. Cincinnati comes in, Louisville comes in, and South Florida. That's the makeup of the Big East. You know, I mentioned that BC West Virginia game, which I think is going to be huge in the Big East. That's November 13th at West Virginia. That could be the the showdown game for a uh, a berth in, uh, in one of the big bowls, one of the BCS bowls, playing for the big bucks. First and ten. Here comes the the youngster again, Corey Ross from Denver, Colorado. Jack. Well, Brent, you would think that Joe Daly would have had enough in the offseason just trying to assimilate the playbook, but he decided to study a very important book as well. It's called The Art of War. Now, you wonder why you play, a quarterback would want to study a book like this that delves into the old Chinese art of making war. Well, one of the reasons is this is the same book that Steve Spurrier, Mr. Pass Happy Spurrier, always issued his quarterbacks to read. One page in there says, never let fall off hook. Closed door. <laughs> Jack, flip open to that page on interceptions, too, okay? <laughs> Don't take job in Washington. <laughs> I'm looking. I don't see it, guys. Uh, uh, Gary reminded me of something. I wanted to remind oh, wow. you all of a big football game. The Grizz got a big game down there. Sam Houston State. Craig Oaks, remember that quarterback out of Colorado oh, yeah. you like, Eric? Yep. He's doing a good job out in Missoula for Montana. They got a game now. Sam Houston State. Dustin Long, the former Aggie quarterback from Texas A&M, will be his opponent. But what I remember about that school is that's where Dan Rather went to school down in Texas. I don't know why his name came up this week. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any verification of that? <laughs> that document has not been forged. I guarantee you. Well, you look down on the, uh, the skyline here in Pittsburgh, and uh, man, we hope everybody safe you can see the rivers you know it's after a big storm with all that rain that's when the rivers rise second down I, again. I think Bill Callahan has just decided that if we don't turn the ball over we ain't losing because they have been very very conservative now on this drive saw Joe Daly throw a couple passes behind receivers I look for him to kind of give him an option to bootleg possibility get out of the pocket run pass option right here <laughs> Pittsburgh should come after Joe Daly. They need to put pressure on him. Bumper run to the outside. Looks like they're coming after him. Green on the toss. Very conservative. And Brasco will punt it. Well, time permitting, the thrifty Carmelo postgame report, John Craig and Aaron. Stay tuned for highlights and analysis from today's matchups. And, of course, they'll tell you about the second games. Oregon, Oklahoma, Ohio State, North Carolina State. We're coming here on uh, ABC. 
Can Pittsburgh find a big play to get back in this football game? That's what they need. Would it be a block punt, return, fumble, interception, or a deep pass? Another boomer by Cook. Here's Richardson for the 15. To the 33-yard line. And, uh, you know, we've talked about Bill Callahan. His staff is interesting. Brought two with him from the Raiders. Kept Scott Downing and Turner Gill. The offensive line coach from Fresno State did a very good job out there. Dennis Wagner, Kevin Cosgrove, leaving Barry Alvarez at Madison to come down and work with his former buddy. John Blake, the former head coach at Oklahoma with the Dallas Cowboys. Good D-line coach. Bill Elmagian from Purdue. Bill Bush from Utah, and Dave Kennedy, who was a strength coach here, had been at Ohio State. Bill Peterson, the athletic director, uh, certainly knew Dave from days gone by, brought him into Lincoln. Peterson, of course, was the AD here at Pittsburgh before moving to Nebraska. And a play flake by Falco. Short of the uh, first down. And uh, Gary Peterson is interesting as an athletic director. He's uh, he's had a lot of roles in athletics and football. Yeah, he was recruiting coordinator. He's familiar with uh, being a college football staff and what they have to do to win. And I think the vision is correct. I think for Nebraska to get the type of players they want to compete with Texas and Oklahoma, they have to move their offense into a pro attack. Tell kids, come to Lincoln. We'll teach you how. We'll get an education. We'll teach you how to be a professional football player. The running play with Marcus Furman. So again, the reminder of the uh, the second half of our doubleheader coming your way. Oklahoma ranked number two in that coaches poll right now. Ohio State, North Carolina State. Watch Root on this play. He's getting blocked. He takes on his offensive lineman and still makes the tackle. What a play he made on second down. Oops. Third down. Palco straight back. And he has got the, the walk on. He's not got a scholarship. Joey Del Sardo makes another catch. That's as good as you can throw it. Now, Joey's probably 5 6 to be fair, okay? And that ball was thrown right up above his head, and Joey grabs it with his hands for the first down. When you have a lot of rush on you, you send your receivers out to a spot, and you throw on timing. That's a good call by Walt Harris. Field. Incomplete as he overthrows Lee. Boy, Lee never had another gear there. Now, he's been hurt all year. And kind of, you know, it's been a little bit of Walt Harris against uh, Lee, uh, Greg Lee, about, you know, get tougher if you want to be a great receiver. But I thought that ball was thrown pretty well, and we never saw Greg Lee kind of sprint for it. Grigsby, the freshman, he had to match up on him one-on-one, -on -one, and he just never really got to that ball. Yeah, Walt, uh, Walt Harris teed, teed up several of his players. Deflected incomplete. And uh, he talked to Jack about the difference between injury and pain in football. It's a fact. Whether anyone wants to admit it or not, you know, you're a lot tougher mentally if you get pushed. You know, I don't want to play, ever play a guy that's injured. But I, I want a guy that's in pain. We're all in pain. Heck, you know, that's part of being a football player. Now, I'm not saying he dog to play there. I'm just saying I, I look for that extra gear that the great receivers had, and he just never got it on that play. That could be that handspring. Absolutely. Right? Could be. Third down. There's Lee in the middle, the crossing pattern for a first down. So Lee comes through with his fifth reception of this game. He is the leading receiver. Good job by that offensive line that time. They had a corner blitz coming from. Picked up very well by the offensive line. You can see it coming from this side over here. Picked up. Outside tackle. Dave Williams picks it up. Nice shuffle by the quarterback, Palco, to get in there. And if you're willing to throw the ball over the middle against Nebraska, there's some openings. No! 
short drop. Palco got another one inside there the 30 yard line. That's Daryl Strong. Darryl Strong, who's yeah. been a tight end. He's a young man from Florida. And they just moved out to wide receiver. Coach told us that he'd probably get some reps outside. Folks, he's 6'5", 245, out of the Fort Lauderdale area. And uh, he could wind up being a big-time player here. High school quarterback and went to the same school as Blades. They like to throw the fade to him in the goal line area. Palco comes back to Lee on the right side. And it looked like Lee had a little bit of a shot at it over the shoulder. And Courtney Grixby, the freshman defensive back over there, working on that side for Nebraska. Nice waist down, second and a yard. You know that uh, with being down 14 points and six minutes to go, you're going to go for it on third and fourth down. Like the call, try to get the touchdown on second down, and you got two downs to make a first down, and we all know that's easy to do. Just ask Clemson, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a penalty, 12 men in the huddle, and now instead of being third in the yard, it's going to be third and six yards. And uh, Lee is not endearing down. himself to the coach. Five yard penalty, remains third down. There is Lee, he was the 12th man, he had not come off the field. Well, he's not even going to get a chance to go back on either. Instead, another freshman, Kelvin Chandler, number 82. See, that allows Nebraska to go back to their nickel defensive package and blip put some pressure on the quarterback. Swing, Furman, short of the first down. Now it's going to be fourth and a couple, it looks like, huh? That was a rude again. Number 38, the Big. senior linebacker from Lincoln. His daddy played there. Great grandfather. Fine, fine linebacker. Yeah, man to man coverage underneath. Safety's helping deep, and you see Rude playing all over the field. He's taking on the runs inside and knowing who to go after on the outside, and he's a sure tackle. Fourth and what, three or four almost. Lead returns. Comes that blitz. This guy's going to drop. The slant incomplete and that was outstanding coverage that time by Kellen Houston the corner who had the outside receiver number 29 doing the job fourth down slant pass inside technique by Kellen Houston look at there's nowhere there for this ball to be thrown actually it was thrown perfect by Pelko back shoulder because of the inside technique Great defense, and that forced the change of downs. First and 10. There's Horn. Well, we do have a mad move of the week, and those of you who own boats in this area might want to look away as we focus on the mad move on the river. Loose because of the floodwater, folks. Devastating damage. Oh, my. <laughs> The dock is still attached to him. Just part of the horrendous damage. I, the, the bill for Hurricane Ivan, which rolled up from the Gulf, is going to be unbelievable. Daly rolling for oh. Nebraska, throws an interception. Picked off by H.B. Blades, Benny's son. I just think that's a bad call by Bill Callahan. I just don't understand that call. You know, you put a, a young player that does not have a lot of experience and give him a chance to put Pittsburgh back in the football game. A bootleg, crossing guys. Look at Joe Daly had his back to the field. He doesn't have any idea where the defense is. He never saw Clint Sessions. I just don't like that call. With 4.53 left in regulation, the Huskers give Pittsburgh a life. Ah. And it's Benny Blades' son who came all the way up from Florida. And now Palco, pump fake, fires to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Pittsburgh. Greg Lee, after.
after the turnover. Matched up to the outside with Grigsby, the undersized freshman. He got beat for one last week. Josh Bullock can't get there. Lee turns twice and grabs it with the hands. Boy, this is, it just put a team back into the football game with that turnover like that. Now, four minutes to go, it's going to get here. A 35-yard scoring toss. Josh Cummings on for the extra point. Russell is the holder. Tacks it on. Plenty of time left. 445, and it's a seven-point football game. 24-17 is the score. 24-17. And I want to go back to the interception because I think Gary made it quite clear he would not have thrown the pass in no. that situation. No, they've, you just can't let a young player, we talked about it, Joe Daly just does not have enough experience to make that throw in that part of the, you know, play. And, you know, Bill Callahan's very experienced, but uh, we've watched a lot of college football. And kids make mistakes. You need to punt the ball in that situation. You could do that with an NFL play. I think you can. But, but he, you know, see how long Daly turned his back to the defense? If you've never played quarterback before, you can't find everybody after you get back. You can throw the ball deep. But when you start throwing those crossing routes, you just don't know where they, all the linebackers are. I, that was shocking call, and it burned him. Ball is on the tee for Pittsburgh to kick it off. So Vince Fortunas and that defense will get ready now. Ball fielded at the six-yard line by Green. Out of bounds. And there's a penalty flag down. Was there a block in the back over there yeah, on that side? Yeah, he might be calling it holding from his side. You know, there was a couple of flags come flying. Yeah, say a block in the back. The referee was right on the call, and that's going to put Nebraska back about the 12, 15-yard line. And Protunas and friends, and, uh, you know, uh, he's such an interesting character, great student. At, uh, During the return, we the asked him how he lets an opponent know that he has them. Listen to Big Vince. Totally unusual, out of the ordinary. I go, hey, what do you think the greenhouse effect? You know, and that, that'll confuse the heck out of these those offensive linemen because, you know, usually they have a guy talking trash, saying, you know, using all kinds of foul language, but they hear something like this, and they go, who is this idiot? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to use the greenhouse <laughs> effect, Vince. If ever you were going to use it, my friend, unload it now. Three-year starter here. What a good football player. He's held up good all game. Wonderful story, like so many of them in college football. First and ten now against that Pittsburgh front. LaFleur is the motion receiver for the Huskers. There's a penalty flag down on this play. The line judge throws the flag. They both do. I think they must have had an illegal formation. That's all I can think of is they didn't have enough people on the line of scrimmage. Or someone could have lined up offsides for Pittsburgh. Yeah, it has to be an illegal formation. Boy, Nebraska self-destructing here. Can they give away another one? Because last week I thought they gave Illegal away that formation. game. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty has been declined. Second down. I think that's a good call by Walt Harris. You're fighting the clock here also. You don't want to give them another three downs. Second down. Joe Daly's going to bleed the clock as much as he can. The running back slips. Corey Ross couldn't get his footing, and now it is third and a bunch, and Pittsburgh has climbed right back in the thick of this. Yeah, Corey Ross has had a tough game on this grass right here. He has not been able to make those sharp, twisting cuts he's used to making. He has not been effective. I actually thought David Horn has had a better game than him, and I'm surprised that David Horn's not in the football game now. Now what do you do? You throw the ball here. Hard to just punt it back to him and not take a shot at it. If you do throw it, you got to drop back and let the quarterback see the coverage. they got to have to take a timeout here. Second 
So we've got a timeout in Nebraska, and John, that allows us to check in on West Virginia, Maryland. What's going on? Brent West Virginia with a second chance at this field goal. They missed it once, but it was offside of Maryland, so a second chance from 39 yards. Brad Cooper comes into it, and it is blocked by Conrad Bolston. So Maryland saves the game-winning field goal and heads it to overtime. 13-13. Nobody beats us in overtime. <laughs> Nobody beats us in their house. <laughs> well, look at a change of a, a game can quickly change. And when you're 14 points up, Nebraska should have put this game away a long time ago. They have it. Pittsburgh's back in the game. Score the second half, right? Yeah, and you know, you look at how well Nebraska's defense played. Nebraska's offense only has 253 yards the whole game. And there's no timeouts left for Nebraska. They have used all three of their timeouts. Pittsburgh has a pair left. And uh, we've got a moment. Uh, let's thank the uh, Pittsburgh Assistant Athletic Director for Media Relations here. Oh, EJ. EJ Borghetti. We want to thank him for all the help. He does a great job. And out at Nebraska, Keith Mann for his uh, help in getting ready for this game. 3.38 to go. Third down. Out. Incomplete. Uh -huh. Nebraska forced the punt. Oh, my. They're going to call that pass interference? It's automatic first down. That's huge. It's just huge. Oh, that's what that is. Because that should have been, that could have been interference. Oh, my. Because I thought that that was a bailout. Well, Joe Daly could have got it intercepted. Number six on the defense. It'll be a first down at the spot of the foul. Postal. Thrown right into coverage. I don't think so. That guy's going for that ball and almost touched it before the defender did. No, that was the uh, the corner over Revis, there. Revis, yeah. That was Revis coming in. There's no question about this. But he called it on six. Uh, Revis had the I cover. Thought, I thought Revis went right over the top and tipped that ball. So Postal must have been holding on the other side. Slips again. Ross well, going down just like all day. I tell you, Joe Daly. Unless he gave us the wrong number. Yeah, maybe that's what it okay. was. Uh, that's the only thing I can make out of this, unless Postal was covering somebody else out of our picture. Because now, Revis had a coverage on the receiver. Now, he threw it right at that play, Brent. He, he must have got the numbers mixed up. But I thought Revis tipped the ball as he came over and got the, got the ball. Second down, fresh life. Work some more minutes off the clock. Up 24-17. Toss play. And a big run. Ross battles for the first down. It's going to force Pittsburgh now to use their timeouts to get the ball back. They have two. Well, Joe Daly threw that ball right into the thick of coverage and came out of it on third down. Even if he would have completed the pass, they would not have made the first down. And they come out of it with an automatic first down on the interference call. Formation right. David Horn now the running back. Jammed up. Second down and long. And we've got a moment. The Chevrolet players of the game. A couple of defensive fellas that we want to honor today. Barrett Rood, the middle linebacker from Nebraska, played very, very well. And there, it, Benny Blades' son, H.B. Blades, with that uh, interception that gave Pittsburgh life here late in the game in recognition of their effort. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship fund. Second down and nine. Clock ticks inside of two minutes. Run the toss play against the clock. Timeout. Walter was right in the linesman's ear that time and made the timeout call with Maybe one second after the play was down. Very good job by Walt Harris. Blades make another play defensively. Third down. Well, 
think you're going to see that bootleg pass on this play right here. The injured player is Beam. One of the defensive ends here for Pittsburgh. Looks like a leg injury, and hopefully that's not serious. As Blades interception, and then the catch by Lee makes it a seven. Third down and nine. And Nebraska and, and 24 Pitt, points in the right. first half. And Pittsburgh has one timeout left. So, you know, if you're looking at a strategy here, Bill Callahan says we need to run the ball, force them to use their last timeout, and if we have to punt it, we have to punt it. If you're going to throw the ball, please, Joe, bail me out here. <laughs> Don't throw it to their guys. <laughs> Get the right color jerseys, right? Because <laughs> that, that, the last two passes have been almost, a, and one was a disaster, the next one was almost a disaster. This one doesn't look good. So here comes the third down and the uh, and two key plays have given Pittsburgh a life here. Mm -hmm. First one, of course, was there was that pass Gary referred to. Blades intercepted. Lee off a pump fake. Then scored the touchdown. And now on the third down, rolling is Daly. Tries to cut back against the oh, it, and Nebraska forced the punt at a minute and a half left. Brandon Coe is left guard, Deck Daly. And that was the old one. I'm going to call a play for you, but don't dare make a mistake. And Joe Daly said, I ain't going to make a mistake. I'm just going to keep it. Watch number 75. Gets his own quarterback. That almost caused a fumble. You see him? Watch his ball almost come out. His own guard, and, and Daly makes a good job just holding on to that football from his own offensive guard. If anything can go wrong, it usually does. Richardson wants to go back over to the uh, punt return team here. He was already on the field, coming to the near side. Sam Cook, the junior from Seward, Nebraska, uh, he will be out there. Lane Kelly is the long snapper on this punt. The heat is on. Lane Kelly now, the young man from Omaha, needs to deliver a good snap here. Should be opportunity to get a return. Nebraska has pulled in all their wide guys. Everybody's tight right in here. They're going for protection first. So if they get the punt off, Pittsburgh should have room to run and get the ball back to at least the 45, 50 yard line. All right, Kelly. Right to Cook. Gets it off and Richardson will be driven inside the 25. Great coverage. And down at the 24. Splendid special teams coverage that time by uh, Nebraska. That's where they will be with 118 left on the clock. Brandon Ragoni has been a tear from it. He, he, he gunned that one in that time when he was real tight. As, oh boy, is that blades coming off? Holding his knee. Ragoni made that play, Brent, right there on that one. In tight. Just, just hold it to the 24-yard line. Outstanding gunner. Now Pittsburgh out of timeouts. Clock will stop on first downs. 118 to work with. They must have a touchdown. To throw it away, live for another down, and there is a penalty flag for the interference call. Yeah, just huge, huge in this game. Huge play, back-to-back -back defensive plays. Joe Daly got burned for one and, and survived another one. Now you got to take this play if you're Nebraska. It's not a down game anymore. It's a distance game. You don't care if it's first down, second down. Just move back. Holding. Offense number 68, 10 yards from the previous spot, remains first down. You can see it inside. No question to tackle the defensive line. Yeah, Matt time. Myers was the guy that time. Thomas was trying to get in, tackled him, and now Palco.
Fires to the middle, Lee dropped oh, it. My. Right in the eel bread basket. No pressure at all on Palco. He was able to slide up in the pocket, and the zone actually backed up too far that time and let Lee come underneath it. Lee completely took his eye off this one. Watch this. The linebackers go past him. He's actually underneath the linebackers. Ball looks away. Watch him look away. See, he's starting to look upfield to run with the ball and drops it. That would have been a first down. 105. Corner blitz. The receiver doesn't see it. Palco the other way for a first down that time. Kelvin Chandler, the receiver. Actually brought both corners that time. The bottom of the hour, in case you just tuned in, closing minute of Nebraska and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh in the hurry up, out of timeouts, trailing it by seven. Tyler Palco taking off, can't do that. continue to run. He's got to throw an incompletion, there are no timeouts. Can't do that. He got up and attempted to call timeout. He's got to know as the quarterback, there's none left. Now it is second down. Paco to the middle, got it, Del Sardo. That'll stop the clock. At the 44 yard line, 29 seconds. Paco has thrown one long touchdown pass in this game to Greg Lee, the tall receiver. He's off to the right, working against the freshman corner. The freshman's up, bump and run. Lee wants it, he doesn't see him. Oh, he had broken past the freshman in bump and run, and Palco didn't see him. Yeah, the problem is Nebraska broke by their guy. Bernard Thomas that time, number five, broke in there. Nebraska is playing what they call a robber defense, bringing their safeties to the middle of the field. Watch Robinson come inside. Thomas, um, excuse me, Bernard Thomas come inside and make that play. Lee inside slant had him. Now I look for Nebraska to play a two deep this time, splitting the field. See if their safety stay wide and help on the slot of the pass. Nope. And second down, Palco. Another pass dropped. Would have yeah. been a tough catch, but it was catchable. The, the, the Pittsburgh receivers are dead tired. They probably don't have anybody else to play, but they just cannot even breathe. They're sucking wind so bad right well, now. Why are they so tired? The football's not heavy. Yeah, well, they're running down those routes every play. Look, they're going to make a change. They're going to bring in Strong. But they just right now, all three of them, Lee, Salvo, and Chandler, just cannot. They don't have any shape to their routes any longer. Third down and ten. Nice matchup down here. You got the big guy against the small guy. Palco's coming back right too high that time. Strong was not that deep. And so it comes down to this play. You got to throw this one to the end zone, don't you? 13 seconds. Actually, because the clock stops on a first down, you probably could stop it once here with 13, Gary. You threw it underneath the first down marker. You gotta it won't. Get you got to get it deep. Yeah, you got to get at least get the past first down. Yeah, you got to get past that 35-yard line. You've got 13. You're they out will, of timeouts. They will attack the middle of the field. The though. receiver's got to know not to run the clock out. He lofts it. Strong. Hangs on. Do it gives him a chance. Six seconds. A freshman. That was strong. Who made the catch? Now with six seconds, he can stop the clock by throwing the ball down. You can see the signal right there. He could fake the dunk and throw it too. They gotta have seven. Six ticks on the clock, and the freshman, the best catch of the day. Well, Lee made a good one, but watch this catch by Strong. It's all one-on-one. -on -one. The safeties are in the middle of the field. Watch how late the safety comes over to get there. Bullocks gets there late, and Strong makes a wonderful play. He ran all fade routes in practice. Would you give him another fade into the end zone and let him go up and get it? The way he looked on that play. Yep. 31-yard gain. The ball's at the 14. Five seconds. No timeouts left. That late turnover by the Huskers. Let's see if they don't give Grimsby a little bit, or Kelly Houston, a little help to the outside. 
They're going to put Strong over on the freshman. They need to rotate one of the safeties over there to help. Josh Bullock's has got to watch him. Too many men in the huddle. They're going to get a 12-man huddle call. Back it up five yards. Man, Pittsburgh's made a lot of silly mistakes, haven't they? 12 men in the huddle twice in the fourth quarter. How do you Pit do ball, that? Substitution infraction. Offense. 12 men in formation. Number 12 leaving the field. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Neither team has a timeout to talk anything over. They'd be just out there. Pittsburgh needs the touchdown at extra point to force overtime. Here's the safety. Will they help? Now go. Gonna have a chance to throw for it if he can find anybody. Throws it to the end zone. The battle incomplete. Nebraska survives. The Cornhuskers come into Pittsburgh, score 24 first half points, and then hang on. And ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. And coming up now, I want to remind everybody we've got more college football. Ohio State against North Carolina State or Oregon, Oklahoma. And again, the final score, a seven-point win by Nebraska. 24-17. For all of us, I'm Brent Musburger. So long, everybody.